was deluded, I'm back again. Come on, Ian. <laughs> just said there people deluded i'm back again first things first good morning good afternoon good evening and of course good night people make sure you're smashing the like button the quicker we get to 200 likes the quicker we look at transfer news obviously i'm sure you all, all woke up this morning or whatever it whatever time it is or period of the day in whatever nation you're in you know you've seen pedro neto rumors look a bit more concrete and ultimately circle back on us people after that we've been linked with telemans we've been linked with someone referred to as the ukrainian neymar big up the twitch gang we watched some highlights you can't go off the highlights there looks like there's potential there but i wouldn't exactly say neymar as usual i hope you lot had a great weekend you know i hope you lot really did i hope you lot had a great weekend a great week last week and i hope this week is filled enough on filled of an abundance of riches for you lot in your personal and private lives hope you and your loved ones are healthy any talking points feel no sort of way and get about getting them in because while i love to talk football it's really just you lot i love you lots questions you lot make this what it is it's just the ability to discuss football day in day out with you lot is a pleasure people in relation to other content obviously after this you'll see to the pinned message and in your twitch schedules according to the platform you're on it's man united liverpool tonight i'll be doing a watch along for, for that just before such we'll be playing football Man manager at 4 30 as well man obviously it's lovely to see chelsea getting patterned chelsea lost three nil just made my weekend 30 times better crazy man <laughs> Hey, who? I weren't there at Rebel. I weren't there. Did you weren't there? I weren't there, bro. I weren't there, bro. I weren't there, man. I weren't there, man. I weren't there. I weren't there. <laughs> it's a catfish. It must be our next man. It weren't me. It weren't me, man. It weren't me. Well, if it was there, I heard that event was lit. And big up yourself, man. It'd be lit to catch you like again. Now that Ukrainian guy got a standing ovation at the burner, but it must be saying, look, but I ain't got no real. I can't go off anything. You know, he looks a very good dribbler technically. Bit of a kick and run merchant, but looks a very good technical footballer. Able to use his left and right. Plays with his head up. Good ball carrying skills. Got a good physical height and that on him. Very blessed technically. Looks good on the counter attack. He's lit, but I can't go off nothing really and truly. I can try go back and rewatch that Real Madrid game. I don't have a case study of this guy. I don't really know his strengths, let alone his weaknesses. Just based on the comp. His playing style looks all right. 20 million euros as a development sort of player. All right, calm. But yeah, man, it'll be brazy. Yeah, the top did come, man. If I don't laugh, I'll cry, DG. That's true. Man City didn't win too great weekend. Listen, we sit pretty in pink. Top of the table, two points clear. August is amazing. Let's end the league now, really and truly. You know, there's going to be many bumps and bruises, twists and turns. But right now, it's all right, man. It's all right. Morning, bro. The man said that on Steam Bomber. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as it like crack, we've been starved of transfer news. Hey, bed, big up yourself, gent. Next to as he said, smash the like button. We need another backup keeper because an injury to Ramsdale we're dropping points like no tomorrow. Let's give Matt Turner a chance, man. Neto is a great option. Shout yourself, Hudson. Adore is wavy, appreciative for your support. Neto season. What's up, my boy? Shout out from South Bend, Indiana. Hope you had a great weekend with three points in the bag. Amen. Woke up this morning on top of the table. Feels amazing. You're right. Graham, I appreciate you for asking. I'm well, my dude. You know, recovering my voice from a, a, a mad weekend. But other than that, it's crazy, man. Pedro Neto should have went Arsenal from time. It's only the start of the season. It means nothing. Let's see in December when most players go to the World Cup. I hear that, man. That Ukrainian Don played more like Kaka than Neymar. Either one's a stretch, though. Yeah, it's true. 
you know, the name of thing it weren't they were capping a lot in that in that report, but you start saying fancy names, you get clicks in it. So I can't begrudge people for doing such, man. It is what it is in that regards. Let's keep running up the lights. People off to a terrible start though. 39. Where are we at? Where else are we? Let me make sure I've got everything. That tab police are gonna have to leave me alone. We don't need that. We don't need that. We need that. We need that. We need that. So people, I'm just browsing. I'm just browsing the net for you lot, making sure we don't miss a damn thing. Let's see what else is being said out here. Can't lie, man. If 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 Wolves really do only want 50 million for Pedro Neto, it's crazy. But apparently Arsenal want to pay 35. My come man. Arsenal, please just just give them the bread, man. Just give them the bread, man. Just give them the bread, man. 50 million's calm, man. I understand negotiations. And if it has been going on for weeks, I understand it. But just, just give them the bread, man. Just give them the money. <laughs> You know, it's transfer season. If we could just sign Pedro Neto on the midfield, I don't think we're amazing. But we're off to a good start. Well, it's been a good transfer window, to be fair with you. So we'll have to see how it develops, really. The Premier League must give Mikel his manager of the month award immediately. I mean, I'd slide. I don't want him to win it because there's a curse on that. Pedro Neto don't excite me. He's too similar to Martinelli. Mudrick looks like he'll give us something different going forward. I mean, Pedro Neto's more ready to make an immediate impact. And I see what you mean with the with the Martinelli thing, but I wouldn't say he doesn't excite me. I mean, he can play on the left, he can play on the right. He's got scope to be a lot better. He's a Portuguese speaker. Arsenal have followed him since his Braga slash Lazio days. If Arteta is a fan, then that just further confirms things, really. But again, you know, there is that scope of Pedro Neto needing to score goals, really and truly. Obviously, when you're linked with Gnabry and Rafinha and these sort of guys, Everyone else, respectfully, is going to be a bit of a downer. But at 22, there's a lot there. Obviously, the one thing for me is, is he over that injury fully now and ready to go? Because if he isn't, then it's an issue. But he's contracted until 2027. Wolves play hardball. Again, it's been one that's been rumbling all, all summer. Uh, Friday, you saw what? Fair enough, it might not be the most credible source. But uh, what? 90 minutes said Wolves are, are, are softening their stance and... Chelsea, Arsenal, United, amongst others, are looking and monitoring the situation really and truly. is a good option to have instead of Saka or in place of Saka. Obviously, goals are one thing really because in looking in front of me right now, in in 76 appearances in the Premier League, he only has nine goals and 10 assists. So 19's got 19 goal and assist contributions in 76. For Wolves, he's played 95 times, got 11 goals, 11 goals and 12 assists. So 22 years of age, he's still learning and finding his feet. He's not going to make that immediate impact, probably hope, but he gives us an option. Un unable to find the back of the net so far this campaign, people. But if Arteta's done his talent ID and he thinks this is the man to help him, then it is what it is, man. Let's go and get low and let's go and get this done. You know a lot about football, don't you, lad? I don't know, man. I'm just a fan with an opinion. I know nothing, man, but appreciative. For those kind words nonetheless broski um so yeah again i can't make any time stamps if not i'm having pedro neto he's able to play on the left able to play on the right gives us another option we need another winger if pepe is leaving i know obviously different context but when abamian left we didn't bring in a striker but we need stuff man shout out to saka he's played 100 premier league appearances now you know, but we need to rest the guy's legs or just drop him when he's not playing well. It not not really because of that. You know, Saka's close to playing at least 40, 50 games somewhat in a row. We need to be able to share the to rest these guys and let them out and when, when the time's come. And obviously we need better players because as much as I like Saka, he's earned that right. You know, he, he, nobody's given him anything at this club. Saka has earned the right to play every week and he's made himself important, but there's no competition there. And I feel with the new signings and flushing out players and stuff, there finally is competition. Like if you go through the squad, in my opinion, unless an absolute and not not trying to catch anyone out, unless Hayes, this is for Gabriel Hayes. This is form drops dramatically. He's playing every week. Big up Eddie and Ketia, but he's playing every week. Ramsdale, unless a madness happens, Turner is not taking your spot. And you'd probably say Bakayo Saka, unless a madness happens, no one's taking your spot. And there's competition. I'm not trying to catch people out, but we need competition. And I'm having Pedro Neto. 
if we could, it would have been Gennabri or Rafinha. I'm here for this, really and truly. You know, he's somewhat in the middle in that we've been linked with some rawer talents that are more, not that they're at the bottom, but some very raw talents. I would say call this dream chasing, Rafinha, uh, Sane, Gennabri, that will dream chasing signings. I think Pedro Neto is just below them. You know, he's kind of in the same bracket with Bowen. Bowen, West Ham would have cost an arm and a leg. If Wolves are ready to negotiate with us, then I'm all for it, you know. We've seen Pedro Neto source us a few times, you know. He wants to take his man on consistently, can cross. He wants to shoot. There's obviously a lot of refinement to be done in this, if I'm honest with you. I'm here for it, really. I'm here for it. Especially if Pepe leaves. Whether you rate Pepe or not, he is a decent player and he gives us an, a, a decent option off the bench. So if Arteta can bring a player into the mix that he wants to use and he can get to the next level, then I'm all for it, really. It feels like it's Pedro Neto or nothing. Hopefully... There are other there are other solutions if this doesn't happen. As you know, Wolves are gonna play hardball. They're gonna want to negotiate on their terms. They're not gonna let him go cheaply, really and truly. So we're gonna have to see how it develops, people. Here we have it. Is that good? Come on, YouTube's cool. Shout out the Twitch ones. Is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. Good day, good day, good day. DG move for Neto makes sense. He's like the Marcus Rashford tile. I don't know the Marcus Rashford thing, but yeah, man. Saka is 20, 21, and just hit and just hit 100 games. He needs help. Amen. We are the only club that does this. Just pay the money. This is the reason why I'm not fully behind the regime yet. Just seem to F around with targets until we lose out on them. Bit harsh. And I understand wanting to negotiate, if I'm completely honest with you. Regardless, Saka's playing 50 games in a row. We need cover. I hear that. Them games after the World Cup going to show who's really built their squad properly. Yeah, because although I feel Arsenal have squad depth, do we really? You know, I do think we do. You know, there's question marks over the starting 11, let alone the bench. But do we really? When you start breaking it down, God forbid, if something happens to any of the men in midfield, Xhaka, the way he's playing party, I, I, have we got the options? You know, if something happens to certain men in defence, if certain happens, something happens to Gabriel Jesus, is there the options? And to be fair with you, Mikel Arteta is going to have to live or die by that. You know, he's been in the, the league long enough now. We saw how it happened. You know, we saw a big part as to why last season didn't work because we had to rely on squad players too long. And when we look at January, certain players leaving, we didn't affect it. The players are, you know, the players have to do the job on the field. But if we start getting into them sort of problems, which is the inevitable, it's like a chef cutting their hand. If it harms us, then we need to look at we need to look at the, the the people who are in charge of preparing the squad. Madruk is better in my opinion. I mean, I'm not trying to catch you on and out, but how he looks decent. But what is our what is our how 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 thingy do you know him? Like, do you know his weaknesses? Have you seen him play twenty odd games? Have you how many times have you seen him play ninety minutes? What's he like away from home? What's he like when things aren't happening? How adaptable is he? Does he play with his head up? How good is he on the counter? How good is he in tight spaces? I can't answer this one. Getting Rafina vibes from this one, to be honest, at least we tried. DG, can I get your email to discuss some brand partnerships, please? It is. I mean, my assistant will probably reply to you, but it's that. Think of that. Yeah. Me actually, this is how you know advisors deal with it because it's more time. It's just if you hit that email, someone will get back to you. It's not me, more time. Yeah, that is it. There you have it, man. I can't lie, I still want to keep. I'm not convinced on Turner. Same, but the one luxury I have to give Turner, I haven't seen you kick a ball for Arsenal Football Club in an official game. You know, I'll give you time to get up to speed, and that I don't really trust you. I do think we're going to be in trouble. I don't think your levels really. And I, sometimes I just feel you can sniff these things out, but I hope so, man. Any news on Jeremy P? No, I mean, 200 likes. We'll look at all of that stuff, people, man. Hit the like button. We're at 60 likes. 140 more to go, man. Very similar to Martinelli. Completely different, really. But, yeah. Boy, hey, DG, you got a PA? No, I just got someone, you know, I just got some good people around me that their strengths are my weaknesses and, their, and my weaknesses are their strengths. Their strengths are my weaknesses and, and vice versa, better yet. So just people being nice, man. I wouldn't quite say that. So, yeah, man, it is what it is. Once again, Pedro Neto is wavy, but key question is goals. And he don't really have much to, much like that to him. But if he's got the development and if we're, if we're the development scope for that, and to be honest, we're not going to sign too many 
finished players. As much as Gabriel Jesus is wavy, he's not the finished article. He probably wouldn't be here, you know. So it's just about taking these guys to the next level in which Pedro Neto fits that. Obviously, you would like a couple of players that are ready to do this thing now, you know. And shout out to Xhaka, really, because whatever, you know, whether he has a dip in form or continues, it's been three games. I do demand a lot more of my experienced players. I do extend that experience term to... For me, Martin Odegaard and Jesus and Zinchenko, definitely where this young squad is concerned. But if we're just looking at, at age, we need a lot more consistency throughout the course of the season from Granit Xhaka, Partey, El Nene in the roles he plays, you know, and, and pe anyone in and around, even Cedric and anyone in and around the team, really and truly, because we ain't got all day with these guys, man. Smash the like button, people. I hear that teamwork makes the dream work. Amen. When it comes to Pedro Neto, if Arsenal are getting him, have to go in hard and fast. DJ, I'd rather buy Pedence than Neto from Wolves. I hear that Neto's, I mean, Pedence has sourced us for Olympiacos, but I don't back that. I'm taking Neto over him every day of the week. Still no one mentioning Fabio Vieira. I think people are mentioning him, but, you know, he's working his way back from injury, really. And although he played off the right-hand side for Swansea, and that is an avenue to do, and we do want to see him in terms of a, just more a na natural winger is what it is. We need that. You know, we struggle. We're scoring a lot of goals, but we struggled to score goals last season. We struggled to create. We bring in more attackers. We should have other things. And it gives us plan Bs. If Saka's on the pitch, it's not happening. Pedro Neto. And for me, I want these problems. I want Pedro Neto, Martinelli, Jesus, you know, ferocious sort of done slash Saka, you know, Saka, Martinelli, Jesus. You know, I would even love one day to bring in another striker if Balogun comes back a dramatically better player from France so we could maybe Jesus has to go out wide to get into the team. Then you have Pedro Neto in the mix. We need different options, man, really. If you want to play, you'll make sure you, you're giving Arteta no reason to leave you out, which in the last three games, our footballers have. No one deserves to be dropped. There's going to come a time where if we were to go 10 games on the spin, it's not just when things are going wrong that you need to make changes. Arteta might have to change things. One thing I like is... Obvious, for obvious reasons with the World Cup, this isn't the typical Premier League season. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but after three games in a normal season, it would have been the international period. Football is about momentum. We're playing well. People are staying fit for now. The games can't come thick and far, and can't come any faster. They need to keep coming thick and fast, and we need to keep winning that. So I'm happy with that. But as Mikel Arteta greatly said, bro, we have to 10 to 12 games is when we really kind of get an inkling as to where we are right now. We're doing all right. We're doing amazing. We're taking points where it needs to. We're doing all we can to have a fantastic August, hopefully against Aston Villa and just before that Fulham, that rings true. Because then when, when the inevitable happens, you know, we give ourselves a softer landing sort of thing. Yeah, Jesus can play out wide. If you bring in another winger or Martinelli's up front or you bring in another striker, sorry, or Eddie and Ketty's form can't get dropped and Eddie's and, and Jesus is playing a bit shaky. You might saw what you saw in the second half, Mr. David, where when Eddie came on, Jesus went out wide. You need different options, especially when you've got multifunctional players. You know, if you could have Pedro Neto keep developing, Saka keep developing, Martinelli keep doing what you're doing, is able to play on the left and the right as well as up front. You know, you saw it at Manchester United away last season and you saw, you know, obviously Martinelli look at danger in the second half more so from the right-hand side, but his involvement in Xhaka getting the assist for the Saliba screamer, you've got that option. You've got Eddie who only can play off the left as well as up front. When you've got adaptable players, you've got things like that. And I more want to see Fabio Vieira play off the left-hand side of the eight or as a 10, but against Swansea played off the right, that is an angle really and truly. So there are things you want to see problems really and truly. So don't, ignorance is bliss. Not quite sure what you're laughing at, but shout out to you, man. If I thought like you, I would laugh to you, man. But yeah, man. Actually, no football. BG, they only want 50 million for Neto. Surely we get it done for that price, hopefully. But, you know, I wouldn't blame Arsenal if they want to get a deal, really. But you're going to have to act quick, really, if you're honest with yourself. Hopefully, we do. Unpopular opinion, but I actually don't want Telemans if he costs more than 20 mil. He's too hit and miss for me in midfield, which I actually think is better than our own. Pedro is average, you no know, need to sign him. Bit harsh. And, you know, just because you know how many average footballers that have done great things for Arsenal Football Club and many other things. Tierney playing left wing was an interesting move for Arteta. It was only brief, though. DG, I like Pedro Neto, but slightly concerned about the knee injury suffered last season. And I don't know what his injury record full stop is like, really. How many knocks 
and bumps and bruises has he taken? He's made three appearances so far this season, so he's he's ever fit. Let me actually type that in. Pedro Neto injury history. I mean, last season, 2020-21, he was kept out for 31, 31 games or 295 days. Prior to that, you'd have to go back to the 1920 season where, you know, he missed three games um, with, a, with a knock, a muscle injury and a calf injury. Season before that, he had an unknown injury with, at Lazio, which kept him out for 11 days. And then in 1718, he had a minor knock, which caused him to miss seven games. So it all depends how, 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 you, how you look at it, really and truly. Eddie and Ketia needs to step up when we have injuries in the front line. Tell them is yes, but Zaha for that prize, that's purported, then we should be challenging. You fetish got to stop now. We need both of them and our and our top four qualification will be ours. Uh, you need to win enough matches and, and rank from first to fourth to get there. It's not just about signing players. Nothing's in assurance. But I hear that. Gakpo can't talk to Neto. Nah, man. I can understand if Arsenal want to structure the deal. We'll give you 35 million now. We'll do what we can. You know, I don't mind it. Especially if I don't know, but if Pedro Neto digs his heels in and does what he can to get that, I understand it. If it's up to me, 50 million, I'd just give them what they want personally. But I can understand it. That's all I'm saying, lad. That's all I'm saying, lad. So, yeah, man. Gapo's another development one. So is he. Not going to lie, I'm not on I'm not on with that Neto transfer. 40, 50 million for a smaller Adama Traore. All runs, no end product. Bit harsh. You know, he's not quite the break dancer. DG, the only thing that is scaring me is we don't know how the knee injury affected his game. We don't, but I just have to hope the club did their due diligence. I feel like they're going for the, for the City mode. Like every player can play in one or two, three, two to three different positions i mean if you're good you can do that and when i see martinelli eddie and ketia to a degree jesus zinchenko fabio vieira emil smith Rowe to a degree bakayo saka granite you know part pa, uh not parte sorry uh ben white tommy asu when you're actually decent i don't i mean you can force it teeny can play as a center back in a back three when you're actually decent at your role and you're good at others and you're intelligent and by all means play multiple roles we need our from Leon. That one day, I'm of all people saying that one day is gone now, man. You're gonna, we're too late now. That one's gone, man. I don't think we'll get Paqueta Riva purely because he seems a bit similar to what we already have. 93 likes, people, 107 more. And we look at, you know, we look at the transfer. No output, might as well play Nelson, to be honest. A bit harsh to say Pedro Neto has no output, but he doesn't have a, a strong catalog of goals. To be fair, he was playing out of his skin before he got that injury. I will, I will say that. On holiday in Crete, on the beach, listening to DG whilst Arsenal sit first. Appreciate you, Freddie. So everyone's mad about the knee injury. And, and it is a legitimate concern. You can't not say it's not a legitimate concern, really and truly. Everybody's right to be concerned about it, really. Nelson's got another injury, ironically. A bit harsh for him. We are the only team that didn't lose points. That's my Arsenal. Come on. I mean, if they're saying 50 million for Neto, but he is contracted until 2027, you know, they're in a strong negotiating position. All we need to know is Neto's weaknesses first. You know, he hasn't got a strong catalogue of goals. So, Mikel Arteta, how does he tie into this team? How does he improve individually? You know, how does he get goals? How does he keep affecting the game? How does he get goals and assists? I do like his directness. I do like his willingness to consistently try and rip his man. He wants to put crosses in. Like Martinelli, he does things at pace. I do think off the ball with pressing, he will tie in very well in what we're doing, if, if, in what we're doing as well, really. But, yeah, if you could get him for 30, 50 million, we value him at 35. I don't know. Does that mean Arsenal only have about 50-odd million to spend? You hear we want to buy Telemans for about 20. Allegedly, Arsenal want, want my man for 35. Are we just trying to... Have we only got about just over 50-odd million to spend to get these things done? I mean, if you can get it done, why not? Big up, DG. I'm convinced that this season our strength will be our defence. We could surprise a lot this season. We still need Partey and Jesus competition slash backup. It'd be naive not to address. I mean, I'll see after 10, 13, 10, 11, 12, 13 games before I, I start talking about surprises and all these things. But we're starting well. All I care about is making it to the end of the year in a decent position. 
I mean, I wouldn't mind Zaha. He bagged again, got a brace. You know, he could be a perfect bridge player a couple of years. He can play up front as well as other things. Zaha's got the swagger, but it's over for the Zaha thing now, really. You know, 50 million, to be honest, I'd pay that for Neto, 22 resale value. That's true as well. I mean, it's a bit mad that he costs a bit, he costs more than Jesus, but calm, in it? There's resale value as well, as you said. We should have got my man at Bra Braga or when Wolves bought him from Lazio because we were scouting him them times. He is an Arsenal boyhood fan, but it never happened, in it, really? I'm taking that on, man. It's, again, our test talent ID, man, get things wrong, but I think it's been good. You signed Ramsdale. I'm sure Bournemouth fans didn't, but to me as an Arsenal fan, you know, I remember arguing with fans. It's like Ramsdale's a decent keeper. I didn't know he was this good with the ball at his feet. Obviously, you've brought Saliba back in at the right time. You're doing what you're doing with Zinchenko and Xhaka at this moment. You know, the pressing's looking well. Odegaard's the perfect fit for us. Jesus is the perfect fit. Obviously, a blind man could see Jesus will cook at any team that will give him an opportunity. But the talent ID's been there. So if the manager's saying, yo, you know what? Neto's the one for me. Cool. You know, we have to have been looking at... We all know for a while now Pepe was going to be moved on. We heard for a while we're looking at wingers. Naturally, this is why you're seeing a variety of names. Pedro Neto, Rafinha, Ganabri, Sane, uh, Pepe from Porto, Bowen, uh, Mudrik, I can't say his name, the Ukrainian Neymar. You know, there's many different varieties of players. Some players are, are, are more ready than others, really and truly. And I do think Pedro Neto's in that halfway house. He's not quite as raw as some of the players we've been linked to. Gakpo, he's not quite as raw as some of the players we've been linked to. Him. But he's also nearer the higher echelons of talents. He's not quite there. Like, I think Rafina would have been perfect, man. I, I, you have to give it up, but Rafina would have been perfect. It was more fan-led than anything with, with Sane and Gnabry, but they would have been perfect. I think Pedro's got that to be better. And as I said, he gives us good combinations, you know. Every day of the week, Jesus, Saka, Martinelli, slash Smith Rowe for me. But you throw Pedro Neto with Martinelli or Pedro Neto, Saka and Jesus. And, uh, you know, all the other front front trios we could do and things like that. Madrid was really good for Arsenal. DG doesn't play for Arsenal, so I'm not sure what you're saying. I still want the Ukrainian guy to. I'm taking him, you know. If you could get him for a cut, 20 million euros... He's part of the squad where he goes out on loan and he develops fair play. But if we've only got X amount to spend, then we're trying to stretch that for Telemann slash the centre mid and Pedro Neto slash the right winger, then we've got to do what we need to do immediately right now for this window, innit? And to help us with our first task of Arsenal returning back into Champions League. Football, really. 108 likes. Keep going, people. There's over 300 of you locked in on YouTube. Unexpected higher bills due for those that are not. Midrick is a baller. Did you watch the Georgia player from Napoli? I can't say his name, but that's another one Arsenal were linked to if he scored. I really don't think we need Neto. We need a winger. So if we're bringing him in, it's calm. Big up Balogun, free and free shout. Tyrese John Jules for Ipswich. He scored a banger as well. Balogun chucking it to Neymar and then Mandir and Mbappe. So let's keep going, man. Hi, DG. Hope you're well. Thanks for the great show. Appreciate that. I think another striker is needed. Too big a drop off from Jesus. Maybe asking for too much. I mean, for me, if I could, a centre mid, I, I would like to revamp the centre mid. I don't, you know, I think only Partey and Xhaka would survive. And I think Xhaka would be a rotation option. Uh, and Lokonga would play, but Lokonga would be a squad player. El Nene, I'd probably have moved on. It feels bad to say that about him because he's a great guy. But I just think a six whose levels to play instead of Partey boosts us or to play with him if we need that. Someone that can do the Xhaka things to a higher standard. Xhaka in the squad is a good player to have. Um, I would have liked two eights and a six. I do like Zinchenko and Ben White's ability to play fullback, and I still want that. But if you could have them two able to play centre back and centre mid respectively, and do jobs it at fullback, as well as having more natural wingers, uh, fullback, sorry, on the left and right hand side. If you could bring in a centre back as well, that's a bit different. You know, depending on what Balogun can do, maybe you need a second, a third choice striker. If there's someone that's a bit different, six foot plus, someone that can bring other players into play, I'm for that, man. Because if anything happens to Jesus, it's an issue. And Jesus is perfect, you know. Didn't really give him much service or anything really to work with against, against Bournemouth, but he scored and VAR shagged him against Crystal Palace, affected the game great. And obviously the dribble for, for one of the goals at Bournemouth. Crystal Palace, you know, he affected the game great. You know, he wins fouls, he makes fouls, you know, he, he he never stops running, he links up well, he stretches the team up the field. Goals and assists, which he's going to score and has done already, are, uh, you know, are the minimum, but he just so many bonuses. 
I do think Eddie's developing, but there is, you know, if you start suffering injuries to key players, which I hope doesn't happen, but it's a given in football, we have to be able to counteract that. So I hope so, man. I'll take a punt on Marco Asensio loan or Ed, you can work his magic for a cheap deal. Cheap deal, man. I am conf I am concerned a little if we do get Neto in midfield. Would you say we are close to perfect for the season? I'm not understanding, man. It's like I don't understand the first bit. I mean, we're as good as we can be, really. To answer the second bit, Neto can play both wings as you should be able to. The Ukrainian guy is pacey and direct. Neto can't even put a cross in this season. A bit harsh. But what I will say is, you know, how often have you seen this Ukrainian guy? Tell me 10 games you've watched. Tell me these weaknesses. Don't tell me his strengths. Tell me his weaknesses. Tell me moments he could have done better. Because I'm not saying you're wrong, but, you know, how much have we... Not, nothing to do with him against him. I'll take both. I'm happy with either based on what I've seen. But how to make conclusions, how much have we seen of this? How much have you seen of this player? If you can't tell me 10 games, you ain't watched him for 10 games, you don't know what he does off the ball, let alone on it. We're talking out our asses slightly. He looks class. But again, conclusions are being drawn. Development player, I'm all for it, but make it happen. I'm all for it. Out of all the raw sort of players we've been linked with, I prefer him over the Lille player that we was linked with. He looked decent. But why not, man? He's only 21, 22, so there's resale value as well. Neto is a dream signing. He speaks Portuguese and isn't from Brazil. So we won't have all our guys gone if Brazil goes far in international play while he can communicate easily with Jesus. Hear that, man. Keep the opinions coming, folks. Elite opinions. Where are you ranking Arsenal with Neto and Telemans? Bro, we can finish as high as in the top four. We can finish fifth, eighth. We have to be our best friends and keep doing what we're doing, man. Pedro Neto will be a great signing for us at Arsenal. We need more signings to avoid injuries. That, brother. I hear that. I hear that 123 likes, people keep going, keep going, keep going. I can't lie, I'm I'm I can't lie. I just watched both compilations. I'm acting like I've scouted him proper. Okay, I'll agree. I'll take both. Neto is great, but I don't know about the injury. I mean, it's a fair consideration. I'm not trying to catch anyone out. I'm just saying, logically, how can we make if you know about him and you're Ukrainian or you're watching him? Fair play. I've only watched comps. You know, he played against Real Madrid a couple of years ago, if I can remember correctly. But I only have a vague idea of his of his playing style. If we haven't, if no one can tell me his weaknesses, let alone his strengths, you know, and all of them things, then we're making conclusions on guys we don't know. And if the club have done their due diligence on Neto and, and the Ukrainian lad, then that's enough for me. Obviously, if it works or it doesn't work out, we judge and critique where it applies. But what I do know is I don't want players for the sake of it. But if you let Pepe go, we are a bit light. DJ, I think Neto would have greater output. Arsenal Wolves are very are a very defensive team, and Neto probably has to do a lot of tracking back. We have more attacking license at Arsenal. Hey, DG, good morning. Appreciate you locked in from Antigua. Question: Would you do a swap deal with Nelson for Neto with cash included? I mean, if we could, why not? But I mean, if I was them, I'm saying, who's Nelson, bro? Give me the money, bro, or give me Marquinhos, the, the signing you actually stole from us. I'm, I might entertain Reese Nelson if I was Wolves. But I'm sitting there and saying, yeah, no, money's enough, man. Give me my 50 million. You can throw you can throw Reese in as well if you want, but just give me my bread, man. Neto stats are very poor in the final third, but people like his flair. I mean, he hasn't got goals and assists, but what other metrics do we have to judge him with that? How Edu's not in for Depay is criminal. I wouldn't say it's criminal. Saucy as hell with decent output with more to give. Show a bit of love like we did for Jesus. And boom, another triple A talent in our squad. I'll take Depay, but yeah, man. We need to add more players. Not enough to finish fourth. We haven't played top four teams. Swear down. Big up, DG. Mr. Tierney FC. Do you see Tierney being able to do what Zinchenko does regarding build-up play? No, because Zinchenko is a, is a midfielder by trade. You know, he's got more... Tierney's a left back. He's more he's one dimensional. It's just the left back stuff. Sinchenko is a center mid, almost always a, a 10 by traders. He was converted from a 10, as Arteta said. So naturally, he's gonna have more gears to go up. He's gonna be more comfortable in possession. He's gonna be more saucy on the ball. If it's time to be in the trenches defensively, then Tierney's your man. If it's 
we can afford to be a bit more expansive going forward. Then you saw the relationships in Chenko and Xhaka uh, are developing on the field, reflected in the latest game. You know, I'm seeing Zinchenko, he's a left back, say, Xhaka, look after that. He's running over to right back area to offer an avenue for Ben White to throw the ball to him, really. And he's going in midfield quite well. You know, he did intercept quite well. It's good what we got going, that partnership between Zinchenko and him. It's not going to work in every game, but yeah, man. DG, you don't know how good a boxer is until you see how he reacts to getting punched in the mouth. Arsenal yet to be tested. Let's see how the team reacts to adversity. That's all I've been saying, Trini Guna. But ain't you been sitting there telling me that we're going to win the league and do all of this? Crazy. Don't change your tune there, mate. Keep the opinions and questions coming, people. Amazing stuff. I see a comment from Graham up further up. There you have it, DG. I said it about a month ago. I still believe Arthur Mello is coming, whether it be a permanent or a loan. Deal will probably happen on Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Not saying it's ideal. I still want the Ukrainian guy too. He can play centre or the wing. I'm having him as well. Have you noticed Partey hasn't been overworking himself, which might keep him from getting injured? I don't know about that, but he hasn't needed to. Pardon me, smash the likes, people, and roll to 50,000 and follow Twitch links in the description. Join the nation. Don't forget, later today, we're doing a watch along for Manchester United, Liverpool, and we're playing football manager at 4.30, people. A bit off topic, but if we're looking for a wide player, I'd grab St. Maximin, to be honest. Got no reason to leave. And, you know, Newcastle are struggling to bring players in of a certain standard. If they let him out, it's definitely after what he did to Carl Walker. They're going to, it's going to cost more than Pedro Neto. And it's, it's it's uh it's probably more than I pay, man. One thing I'd say against Midrick is he does kind of disappear in games. Ainsley and 35 million. Neto is better at dribbling 1v1 and is defensively sound. And the way Arsenal play, the winger needs to be aggressive 1v1. So he is the one I'd go for. For the other Don, I don't know. We definitely need another winger. Saka has been playing too much. I can't lie, I don't really... You're not wrong. Man City showed us why they're the champions when they came back against Newcastle at a tough ground. Arsenal need to aspire to that level of determination. Nelson and Ainsley plus cash then. What do you think? Why not, man? If you could knock the price off and offer duds, why not, man? But it's a madness. Adama, we don't need Tekken fighters. The main thing is we're in a good position. We're definitely bringing in a player, either Neto or the Ukrainian guy. So we just have to, just have to wait and see. Do you think it would be a good idea to play Martinelli as a striker in cup games to give him experience as a number nine? Why not? I do think he should be able to lock that down. Neto for 50 M's is not worth it. Much better players out there for less. Who? Edu should be hitting up Okan for, for Sane. 40 M's should get it done. I don't know if that's going to happen, especially with Serge new contract. Sane out in the cold. I wouldn't say he's absolutely he's out in the cold. He's playing. I mean, it's a player that's that's a player that's been linked with us before, Romani, and he's done well. He started off well for Napoli. I don't know for world class and that. Let the man develop. Could Neto be all your? Hopefully, but I don't need Tekken fighters. What do I need a Dama Traore for? Like, if I want bodybuilders, I'll shout. Sim, is it Sim, Simon Simon Panda? What do we need a Dama for? We don't need to be bleaching. We don't need bodybuilders. We're not trying to get baby oil adverts. We've already got people that need to improve their output. You know, unless he's going to say, I want to play right back. Dead. Top talent, bro. Dead. There's no way Adama Traore can help us. I would love to wake up one day and be proven wrong and eat my words and Adama Traore is a bad boy footballer. But never, ever, ever, ever do I think Adama's going. Meedy, bro. Meedy's too nice. He's shit, man. Just break dancing and he looks, just cause he looks wavy because of that. That's Meedy, man. Meedy. I don't know about all that. I want footballers, man. Come on, bro. Man, I'm not trying to... See. I, I mean, you can have a Dharma on the bench. You might need games where you just need someone to run and that. But look, we've got ballers now. You want to see any of that? Come on, man. That's crazy, man. He ain't bringing nothing to the team. He's sprinter as well. But the problem is we're playing football. Tell him to sign up for Team GB or something. I think Telemans is not enough for midfield and we need a backup goalie. The current one looks rubbish. I know you ain't talking about Ramsdale. We don't need the oil merchant, man. Come on. That's me, D, man. 147 likes, people. 200, and we look at what's going on con concerning Arsenal in the transfer market. We actually make sure there's nothing else. Hey, why is it? Why is it moving me away? What's going on here? 
Man can't be asking for a Dharma Chari in 2022, man. For what? Come on, man. I'd rather persist with Pepe and I'd rather give Nelson, I mean, Marquinhos a chance before I say sign a Dharma Chari for what? Living, breathe. If we had to buy anyone, I'm, I'd, bro, I'm doing all I can to bring Zaha to the carpet before him. No way should Arsenal ever, ever be looking at a Dharma Chari if, if, if that's considered a serious option. Unless we wake up and he's truly a world-class footballer, people need to sack themselves. You know what? I want Hudson Adoy over net. Oh, I don't know about that, but Hudson, I'm taking Hudson Adoy over Adama. Pepe is better than Adama. Rate him, please. Your that opinion's horrible, Tariq. He's definitely better than Adama. I don't think Pepe is anything to write home about. Definitely better than Adama. Try your rate, man. From the three games so far, what is our weakness on the pitch this season? Like a player or misleading tactics? Wouldn't say there's misleading tactics. I would say game management. Our game management was definitely better against Crystal Palace and uh, who did we play? Bournemouth probably needed to be a lot better against Leicester, but we got the job done. I do think Bournemouth, that was the easiest 45 minutes we'll ever play. I do think they only looked half decent last seven minutes, even though they, they were trying to attack a bit more in the second half. But you could see a couple of times, you know, Partey gave away a silly free kick. Jack a five-yard, straight five-yard pass. And it weren't just them, Ramsdale as well. I'm just saying when man start getting tired, thing, and it happens to everyone, things start happening. It's just about making sure the way we're playing, the standards we have in the first 10 are like in the last 10. And obviously adapting our game because it's, it, 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 it's unsustainable to play with that level of intensity that we've started these first three games, specifically the first 20, 25 minutes. Against Bournemouth, I think in terms of all-round game management, let's be honest, in the three games, Bournemouth pulled the least punches and that was the easiest game we'll ever play. Um, I think that's been the case. I'll be real, man. I think that's the easiest 45 minutes we'll ever play. Second half, they did kind of try and fight us and offer a bit more and we finally started hearing their fans. All you could hear was Arsenal fans and the Saliba chants and the Martinelli chants and all of these sort, sort of things. But I, I would say that really and truly, and I would say more so Leicester and probably Palace, while it's comfortable and we're not really in trouble and everyone's played well, I think we make the games look appear a bit closer than needed to be. Definitely against Leicester, un unnecessary goals to concede, really. The Saliba own goal, the moments you could see that was happening before. Madison's goal was disappointing to concede. As great as we've been attacking, I think we're allowing teams into it a bit more because ultimately Leicester, for example, only had two shots on target, but those two shots led to two goals. They had six shots in in total. They had more percent of possession as well. Um, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really care. Um, I don't really care for um, possession necessarily because it's what you do with possession. But they get Leicester had fifty one percent of the ball. We had 49, 49. We had six hundred and four hundred and sixty two passes. They completed ten more, which were probably backwards in four hundred and seventy two. Again, going forward, we was good, but just allowing those little it moments into the game. Obviously, we beat Crystal Palace 2-0. And just going back at them statistics, because of the second half, it finished almost identical. It's another game where they edged possession, 57 to our 43. Both teams had 10 shots. Both teams had two shots on target. And obviously, that was a game of final moments. Obviously, Ramsdale had to make a couple saves against Bournemouth. Is a Mr. Sitter against Ramsdale at, that, at their place. They had three corners to our five. So, I would say that just... Get it just 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 get into that higher higher level really really and truly I, I would say just say Pedro ain't going nowhere he might not man he might not if he signs he signs if he don't he don't we move in it I think we need one more center back since I do not want to see Rob Holding playing anymore for us no I think we just need someone better than him but that's ours who do you think is better Zaha or Pedro at this moment or Pedro Neto at this moment in time, I think Zaha. I think if I needed to win a game, I think Zaha is going to win me the game. Yeah, man. If we can be more clinical in front of goal, we will be more comfortable. We squandered too many chances. I want to see more clear cut chances actually created for Arsenal, really. That's why I want to eight so we can manage games by just dominating the ball and make the opponent run. Thank you for your opinions. Appreciate it. Listen, appreciate you lot for tuned in, man. You know, it's, you lot are ridiculous in a nice way. I feel like we are not learning from our mistakes. We have Partey, an injury-prone midfielder who's back up his L. And then they, I mean, this is that's on the technical ta tactical front. That's on Edu and Arteta. If that's how the movie goes, then whether it's the trust in the player or whatever, 
I've done videos on Jeremy Doku before. Good player, just far too raw at this moment in time for me to justify the outlay that his team probably want. Off to work. Thanks for the best global interactive Arsenal fan channel. Keep well, everyone. I appreciate that. Kind words, man. I'd love to see St. Maximin against DG. I'm getting a red card, boy. The minute you nutmeg me, is fouling season. And again, the dark, I'm, I'm not a dark man. He's a joy to watch uh, St. Maximin because he, you know, he wants to take people on consistently. He wants to rip dons. Zaha's experience is needed at Arsenal. It all depends, I guess, on the fee Palace would want the length of contract because I wouldn't want to let him go if I'm Palace. But you're at the best time to maybe let him go beyond the obvious. You know, he's played a key part to helping you, you know, win at the weekend, get points off um, Liverpool. Obviously, he's he's an experienced player, but there's almost never been a better time. You know, he's you've held on to him. You know, you're not going to get mad money because he's got a year left on his deal. You've got Elise and Eze who could step up and do a thing. It's crazy. The pink kit looks wavy. It does, man. It's the best one, in my opinion. Then the black one, then the Arsenal shirt. In my opinion, Arsenal aren't going to splash the cash, but just seeing if we can get into Neto's head. If he wants to move, that probably removes 5 to 10 million of the cost, and we'll see in Jan slash 12 months. Looking like Neto and Yuri Telemans to close the window. I hear that. I hear that. And we do need an eight, man. Look at what Kovacic could... Uh, listen, they still would have got Savage Chelsea against Leeds with Kovacic, but Kovacic wins fouls. He gets you up the field. Jorginho is on his chase. Kola Gallagher is more of a throwback centre mid. He hasn't... You know, Kola Gallagher would have looked a bit better playing for Leeds against Chelsea, where you're, you're the underdogs and you're pressing and stuff. When it's time to assert yourself, obviously he's got ability, but in the grand world of Chelsea and needing to do things, he's not levels like that. So they're in issues. Really. Big up you lot for tuned in. Top opinions, top opinions, man. Let's get to 200 likes. 167. Keep your pick your questions coming. DG said, Maximin might get away from you, but you can show him how to smash one into the top corner from outside the box. He'd be lovely to play with. Playing with guys like St. Maximin are the best because you hardly have to defend because the other defenders, the other fullback is just focused on that. And yeah, man, it's quite calm. The problem is with guys like that, you, they act like, they like they're deaf when you're saying drop back. Zaha over Neto every day of the week. I prefer a dominant six, though. Zaha can force a move to Arsenal if we're serious about the guy, which probably not, though. <laughs> like, we're probably like the, the move for Zaha, where we're, we're, we're concerned, it's, it's, it's all a madness, really. Nah, we're out of it. And then, you know, Palace were linked with Ishmael Asar. He was linked with Villa. Apparently, it's not working, you know. Again, he's 29, con, you know, 30 this year. He's got three and three. I'll take Zaha. I'm not on the age thing and all of that sort of stuff. I think that is an avenue to explore. He can play left, play right, play behind the striker, play as the striker. You give him a little three-year deal, which if I was advisors, I'm not trying to get, then I'm having that. Man said black legend. it. Zaha is fair. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Kevin De Bruyne is 30. And I'm not saying there's that, but Kevin's 30. You know, Salah's going to be into his 30s, you know. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Kane and Son are, are not too not too far away from that. It's only in the last 18 months, maybe two years at a push, that Jamie Vardy has finally started to look his age. I don't like them them carpet statements, really. Some people exceptions to the rule. For a certain deal, I'd entertain Zaha. He's not my first target. But if I woke up tomorrow and this guy isn't the latest one, Pedro Neto, isn't working, and they said, yo, listen, this is our thing. I've seen us do a lot worse in it, really. And what I like about Zaha is there's a sense of urgency and he's got an attitude about him in a good way. That's one reason I would love not just him, but Madison. They've they've got that positive stick. Uh, uh, what's the saying they used to, always used to say to me in school? What's that? you got a chip on your shoulder. Zaha's like Cali Neto is top shelf UK. Both smell good, but don't smell the same. I don't know anything about that, but that sounds like quite a good example still. Neymar's moving mad. Isn't Zaha an Arsenal fan? So is Pedro Neto. You know, Zaha's a bit mad. I remember when he was on going Everton, he just wanted to get a move by any stretch of the imagination. It's a bit mad, though. Because same way, as much as I think Zaha brings goals and he's last couple of years he's had that, he still ain't scored 100 goals for Palace, you know. And he could do that this year, but in 433 games across his two spells there, he's got... 
86 goals and 73 assists. I'm not taking nothing away from it, but I did think because of Zaha's ability, I thought he would have had 100 goals already for them, man. You don't, though. All right, big up yourself, man. Rickin as well. I appreciate you for resubscribing with Amazon Prime. Big up to my Twitch ones as well. Man said the Dharma is awful. You're being kind, man. Fucking shit. Toilet. Zaha would be just an aggressive pet bait. Ask you here. Nah, I disagree. Because Zaha actually knows what he's doing. Zaha actually, he knows what he's doing. He actually can score an assist. I do think you can give Zaha tactics. Saying that, though, I do think there's times like at Anfield where Zaha could have had a hat-trick and sometimes he's losing the ball cheaply when they went down to 10 men. I think Zaha would, I mean, Pepe Arteta, sorry, would lose his mind at that. I'm here for it, man. Most goals Zaha ever scored in the Premier League 14. I can't lie, for a couple of years, while the Sackers, the Smith Rose, the Martinelli's, all these guys trying to assert themselves in the game, I'm taking that. I'll be real with you. Look, I'm having that. I'm, abso I'm absolutely, absolutely having that, people. You know, I'm taking that for a couple of years. And there's a sense of urgency. I mean, whether you like Xhaka or not, or, you know, or you think Xhaka is good enough, there's a level of consistency Xhaka gives you on his best of days. And again, while we're doing this young youngster stuff, we do need experience. And the experienced players that are here have to give us a lot more. You need a lot more from Thomas Partey, expect, excluding the three games because everything's been well. If Cedric has to step in and play 10 games, we need a certain level. El Nene, when he comes in, you need a certain level. I'm open for it. Of course, there's no resale value. You know, depending on the length of contract for Zaha, you might be left with a madness. But there are some things that are exceptions to the rule that could be done for the right price, for the right wages, for the right length of contract. I'm not against the recruitment of, of, of Wilf Zaha, really and truly. There's a sense of urgency, man. Zaha is like Grealish. Their numbers don't match the talent. I hear that, but we need numbers at this club. You know, really. And Zaha can also play as a striker as well, as we're waiting on Eddie to keep working and maybe Balogun, that could be someone. So I'm here for it, man. The problem is that Zaha is 29 and he don't score enough. He's very much a big hit or miss player. I think Martinelli would be better than him this year. Big up, DG. There has been more end product from Zaha in the last three seasons, plus he plays in the worst team. In a worst team, sorry. I hear that. I take both, truly. He's better than what we've got to think. Saka is 20 with over 100 caps and he's played 50 in a row. He definitely needs another breather. He's not a striker, so, so don't matter about goals. I mean, it does. You know, it, it does matter. Goals, I mean, we live in the Prem where sometimes people go on mad goal streaks where Joe Willock was one and a couple that is Bandulu, but we need goals. Definitely, we can't be bringing in a winger that doesn't have a catalogue of goals or in Pedro Neto's case the ability to become a goal scorer and take guys to the next level. Goals are important. Goals win games. And Arteta has said we can't rely on the same two, three players to score goals. Now, we've seen a couple of goal scorers ac across these three games already. But if you was to say who are the goal scorers within this team, I would say Saka, who hasn't done it this season yet, but has did it last year. The same luxury applies to Smith Rowe, where they're learning how to score goals. I wouldn't class them as that, but within this structure, they are. Gabriel Jesus, where if you're honest with yourself, that's the one kind of, I think he's going to score goals, but that's probably the only judgment. He hasn't scored for a hot minute for Brazil and he doesn't really have a strong catalogue. But in this team, he's a goal scorer. Who else necessarily is there? Odegaard slapped a bracing, you know. Saliba might be a goal scorer with that fantastic left foot effort. So if there could be some confirmation, why not? It all depends on the length of contract for me with Zaha. The Zaha bolt's not happening, in it? It's gone, in it? We should have done that already. I don't think that's a thing. I really don't. And that's the thing, man. Last year, you saw Giroud, Joaquin, Benzema, Modric, and many different levels, you know, people Zlatan to a slight degree. The old players were blossoming in the last 12, 18 months. But Marcel, with a great comment, you know, people acting like players are finished at 30. Look at Benzema, arguably the best player in the world, and he's 34. People just pick and choose, man. It's about how you take care of your body. Amen in that regard. On the topic of Marcel, just because he's always here, but he is a Liverpool fan. We're doing a watch along for Liverpool, Man United. Smash the like button, even if you're not going to be there, please, people. You help to boost the engagement and it helps us get closer to 50,000 subs. 10 more likes and we look at Arsenal's transfer rumours and all those things. First brace in Odegaard's professional life as well. Keith, shout out the Irish. Problem is Martinelli had a rough patch last year and he was still scoring at a better rate than Zaha throughout his career. Martin, I don't know about that. Where, where are the statistics to verify that? Martinelli is going to score 14 this year, in my opinion. I hope so, bro. Martinelli plays for Arsenal. Zaha, don't. Sure, Saka might be struggling a bit in terms of scoring, but don't forget his 
defensive work rate and positioning. I think he's played good in two of the three games, really. I never said nothing about Saka. I think he'll get he'll, he'll do his thing. You know, without him, we don't get that second goal against Palace. He's involved in, I think, which eventually led to Odegaard's second, I believe, where Ben White, Saka have done well. It's whistled across. Jesus is about to strike it very slyly. Odegaard steals it off Jesus, but I don't care who scores, how we score, just that we score and ultimately win games, people. And I'm sure the majority of you are not too different from myself within that regards, people. Zaha is a late bloomer. Zaha is 30. Zaha is 29. He's 30 in November, bro. But goals do matter, bro. If we're bringing, we, we can't be bringing in no wingers where they're not, we're not going to make them goal scorers or they don't score. What is the point? Gudeides looks decent. We were linked to him before. I don't really rate him, but, you know, he's going to probably make me eat my words, man. Arsenal still need more quality players like Paqueta, Gapo, Telemans and Neto. Without significant outgoings, I can't see that. Out of all the Coburn grads, the ones Chelsea chose to keep were Gallagher and Chelaba. To be fair, I think Chelaba might have held it up yesterday if they, brought him, if they played him, man. They were at sixes and sevens, man. I hear that, Corn. People forget Martinelli scored 10 plus goals in all comps in his debut season. Last player to do that was Anelka, then got an injury, still had 12 goal involvements last year. No one wants Martinelli to fail. There are 38 Premier League and 15 plus cup matches. We need experienced forwards to guide the young players. I would say experienced players, like. In terms of age, it's probably Partey and Xhaka. You can can say Cedric and El Nene as well. But in terms of just the wider scope of experience, I throw Jesus into that. It's not even you lot as well. Jesus into that. Zinchenko into that. Odegaard into that. I would actually say Ramsdale into that as well. Potentially Ben White, because you lot before you came to this club were involved in in England duty. And you know, Ramsdale was 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 in high pressure environments in a relegation zone. Ben White went and saw what football was really like on loan at Newport. He was involved with Bielsa's Leeds. Obviously, he played for Brighton. So, yeah, man, experience is a subjective one. You can even throw Holden into that where we see it all the time. So, yeah, man, and for me, it's a level of consistency we need from experienced players, which I think only Xhaka at this moment in time, not that there's a big catalogue, gives us. I must admit, unpopular opinion, a lot more is I need a lot more, a lot more, not in these last three games. And I know fitness is one thing, but a lot more from Thomas Partey. I won't ask him to sign Jeremy Pino. October is going to be a huge month for us. And I can't lie. September, October, things get real. And we're not going to win every game. This is why we need to go out there, win, have a perfect August. So when we do have the inevitable draws and losses and bad days, we have a certain cushion to fall on. And again, we just got to, like Arteta said, 10 to 12 games, we'll see where we're really at at that moment in time. Let's just focus on, on, on Fulham. It's going to be a big test. They're doing well this season. If you got a, if you got a point off, off, off Liverpool, you should be believing you can beat Arsenal. Saliba, Gabriel, the whole team, you're going against a powerhouse in, 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 in Mitrovic. You know, one of the best in the league, Jamaican international, Bobby Reid as well. It's crazy. We should have got Camera on a free before Villa. Ah, not really. I can't. I like him, but I don't think it was that deep, if I'm honest with you. So, yeah, man, it is what it is. We don't need Neto. We need a winger, so I get it. We might not need the individual per se, for argument's sake, but I think we do need a winger. I think everyone can see that. One of my main concerns with Wilf is he's at the stage of a career. Would he be willing to be part of a structure as being at Palace, he's given a free roll. His contract's running down. I mean, he probably best you just stay at Palace and just cool off there. But there could be one last adventure. You know, if Arsenal do get Champions League and things like that in a nice world, that could be one last opportunity. And he was a boyhood Arsenal fan. I don't like to do all of that. He was a fan and all of this. But there's one opportunity saying that. If you can't play for Arsenal, you know, you grew up watching Vieira, playing under him. You're loved there. You're an experienced player. That You know, I don't like the words worshipping. But Palace fans worship you in that. <laughs> Drop my key. Sorry, people. You saw what happened that the grass isn't always greener. Obviously, he meant he moved to United when he wasn't necessarily ready, but the grass isn't always greener. But you might have one last experience. You are right. Fulham is on as easy as many are making isn't as easy as many are making it seem, but we should beat them, though it's the Prem. Chelsea could move for Zaha. Apparently, he's interested in Spurs as well. If they can move a couple of on as well, people. 
I would have gone for Camavinga last season on loan with an option to buy Dream Chasing. Keep your opinions on what not coming. Big up, DG. What's your take on Ramsdale long term? He kind of gives me Pickford vibes. Allow him, man. Ramsdale's cool. That's my keeper, man. But I told you lot this when he was doing his thing. I mean, he's got a brain fart in him. For me, I'd say the near pulse, he could do a lot better. When to run off your line. Sometimes when to play football. But I expect this. Really and truly, I'm not concerned about Ramsdale. I like Ramsdale still. Zaha's lit, bro. If we sign Zaha tomorrow, I wouldn't cry. I'd actually be quite excited because, again, like another player we used to be linked with all the time in Madison, they believe in their source, man, and I like that really and truly. I really like that. Like They're humble, but they, they know that they're good, and I like things like that, if I'm completely honest with you. Where we are in terms of likes, oh goody, 200, 222. Can we get to 300 for the end of the stream, people? But yeah, let's lock into some transfer news very quickly, folks. Uh, transfer news, let's change the title of that. I can't lie, I need to close some tabs because we're just making a mess, even, even more of things. Uh, what's that? What's that? These are irrelevant for now, per se. We can close that. We can close that. We can move that. Sorry, folks. This is an absolute Vaseline. But um, yeah, man, smash the like button. Let's let's start looking at things. Oh, we we can close that. 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 <laughs> Tab police, allow me. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to pass probation with you lot. Shout out yourself, S. Shout out all of you lot tuned in across. YouTube and Twitch can't do it without you lot people, but let's start, man. Let's start with the big one, really and true. Let's start with the the, the 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 reason we're somewhat here. David Ornstein gave his seal of approval for this. And it's something that's been there, but Arsenal in talks over Pedro Neto, Pedro Neto, Pedro Neto deal. We've done, we were linked with him at Braga, at Lazio, and we might get him now that he's at Wolves. Arsenal's top target for a new winger, if Nicolas Pepe leaves, is Wolverhampton Wanderers Pedro Neto. And they just signed Guides and that, so maybe that's their replacement. News of Arsenal's interest in Pedro Neto was revealed in David Ornstein's weekly column. Talks are said to have taken place for more than a month. And central to dialogue is the uh, middleman of George Mendes. So he's trying to coordinate that busy Mendes is a madman. He's a money man, but it's a good one. You know, he's going to get a payday if Ronaldo gets a move to wherever. I'm sure he's Jao Felix's agent and Pedro Neto. So, yeah, he's doing his thing. Is he not? Is he involved? Was he involved in Fabio Vieira? So maybe he can help us in that regards as well. Talks are said to have taken place for more than a month. So obviously we're trying to see the feasibilities of, of a deal and, and the blueprint of what it would look like. And obviously what he would look like, what look at in terms of a contract and his willingness to make the move and gauge, you know, how much Wolves would want to do it. And obviously a bit of that relies on Pepe. And as you lot can see, as we knew, already knew, Pepe was left out of the Bournemouth match and Arteta was very coy on reports of him going. We all know it looks like he's going to join Nice on a dry loan. And you'd imagine by the end of the week, that one there is tied up. As we know, Neto extended his contract in March. He's contracted until 2027, which strengthens Wolves' position, people. Negotiations. So, yeah, it is what it is. Negotiations between Arsenal and Nice over a loan move for Pepe provide the North London club with a potential opportunity to sign a new winger before the transfer market closes. While an addition will only be made if Arsenal can afford it and think it's going to improve their options, a number of candidates have come under serious consideration. Pardon me. After securing Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko, Fabio Vieira, Marquinhos, it's unlikely that Arsenal will be able to ex to be able to expend to able to ex to spend. Where's my glasses? A lot of money. I can't say that word. And they are conscious of financial fair play limitations. Forget all of that, man. It's unclear what level of finance it might take for Wolves to contemplate letting one of their key men depart. However, discussions are ongoing as Arsenal explore whether a deal could be achieved achievable. To be fair with you, Neto played Spurs. All he's got to do is drive up Seven Sisters Road and we can, he can get into the bar of Islington and things go on. I mean, he said, my mum keeps telling me to shoot. She says I don't shoot enough. What's this? So, yeah. Where's this column from, from David Ornstein? Maybe there's more specifics in that as well. Oh, is this a long one? Yeah, I mean, he scored at Anfield and at Old Trafford. He's on this thing, man. He's a lit player, man.
you know, Premier League goal involvements, age 21 years of age or younger. He's propaganda, you know, he's, he's in the right place. We've got the Halen Demon, Saka and Smith Road there, you know. Unfortunately, you've got Uni Boy Hudson Adoy for Torres, and that obviously this was at the time. What date was this article made? This is February of last year, people. So at the time, so he's tying into what we have, people. This is before he obviously got matched. Neto could have played another sport professionally. He was an ice hockey done and he chose football. I hear that. One thing I take from it, I run very low in football. I am fast rotating, protecting the ball. My back is like 30 years of age. I hear that. He still lives with his parents. They drive him to training. And obviously him being a Portuguese speaker, his lip man, obviously he moved to Syria as a very young man. So he is quite adaptable and quite somewhat fearless. So it's crazy, man. At the time, he was fifth for Premier League chances created. And at the time, he's, he's with Kevin De Bruyne, Mount Grealish and, and Bruno Fernandes. And he seems humble. At the time, he said, it's good to have my name around the best players in the league. It's about the team too. The team is helping me a lot. I hope that I can be the first though. I saw this the other day and Grealish has created like 75 chances. So he can create, he can score. Ultimately, he can get better. And he said, I remember, and he said here, I'll be very on, I'll be honest with you. Scoring goals is the main thing I love the most. But when I'm dribbling, doing these runs from midfield, I really enjoy that a lot. To give goals to others, I think the fans love that. To see a player who gives everything and enjoys games, I like the take ons one against one. And I mean, that's what I want to hear because as much as I think Jesus can do that and a couple of others, there's not too many men that can do that in the Emirates team. So I'm here for it, man. I hear that, man. And his idol is Cristiano Ronaldo. So we'll have to see people. But yeah, that was that article. Let's go back to David Ornstein. Arsenal want Wolves' is Neto. Negotiations, well, we've already seen that. Talks are said to have taken place. Is there any other details? Conversations so far have involved Mendes liaising with Arsenal and Wolves separately. So again, it's middleman stuff. Mendes is has Mendes been instructed by his client to get him a move either to the Emirates or elsewhere? You know, has he been given signals that he feels his client can do more? Does his client want to leave? Do, do, is he just seeing the fact that Arsenal won a winger? He's seeing a payday and saying, let me bridge the gap and get my Portuguese client over there to Arsenal where they've got a growing Portuguese speaking contingent. And at 22 years of age, he fits it. And obviously he was an, an Arsenal fan growing up. We wanted him at Lazio and Braga. All the things are making sense. But right now, we're nowhere near a deal. Until, unless we go online and see that agrees, a, 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 a deal has been agreed, at some point, Arsenal and Wolves have to cut out the middleman and talk directly. Or Mendes has got to apply a bit more pressure. Right now, we're not close to that, are we? But conversations so far have involved Mendes liaising with Arsenal and Wolves separately. Um, maybe Wolves have said he can go, but this is what we value him at. While the interest from the Emirates Stadium is concrete and unanimous, um, their counterparts do not plan to sell the 22-year-old this summer. Neto extended his contract in March, committing him to 2027, again, strengthening their position and making it ever harder for us to take him from, from, him, from them. Um, so, yeah, it's unclear what level of finance it might take for Wolves to contemplate letting one of their key men depart, as we said. Previously in the window, suitors for Neto were led to believe that he was unavailable or felt the Portuguese international would be too costly. But the arrival of Ronaldo Ganerdes and Mateus Nunes into Bruno Lager's attack may be interpreted by admirers as creating an opening on Neto. And while we're here, can we bring uh, Ruben Neves to the carpet as well? That would be nice. Flicking over to, you know... Google Chrome people. Arsenal have already held initial talks over a move for Pedro Neto. Arsenal want to pay around 35 million. Wolves want around 50. There's no official bid yet, but Mikel Arteta is a huge fan of the winger, allegedly, people, says Daniel Cutts of the Scum newspaper people. Uh, so whatever that means. And previously, you saw literally last week, Pedro Neto attracting interest from Premier League clubs this summer. Um, he's attracting interest late in the window after a number of clubs were alerted to his potential availability. So is that Mendes, the middleman, alerting these clubs and seeing that it can be done? If you, We have to see people. 
I mean, Wolves have spent over a, 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 in excess of 100 million, allegedly. So maybe they have to sell for financial fair play rules and things like that. This was previous, but 90 Minute has been told that middlemen have been making it known to a number of clubs that Neto could very well be available at the right price and he's gaining interest. 90 Minute at the time were told that Arsenal, Chelsea and United had been made aware that Neto could be available. And United are looking at wingers. I don't know if Chelsea are looking at one having brought in Sterling, maybe more a striker. And I don't know if 90 Minute Football are the most creditable news source. So you have to draw your own conclusions in that regard. Off topic, Saka has appeared in each of Arsenal's last 45 Premier League matches since being an unused sub against Newcastle in May 2021. And by all means, I never want to see that stop. But that tells you that the, the poor lad needs some help in it. We need some other options, really, to avoid burnout. Saliba completed all of his 76 um, of his pass attempts against Bournemouth, the most passes by an Arsenal defender with a 100% completion rate in a Premier League match. Couple in that, I think him and Gabriel in the second half mopped up well. He scored a fantastic goal and he dealt with the little that Moore had to, to, had to offer. Moore tried to compete with him physically. I can only remember one header Saliba missed out on and at, by the end of the game, Moore is crossing the ball for people in the box. Anytime you see a striker go out wide to cross the ball and no one's in the box, that's a sign of frustration. He's trying to show the team what he's been missing out on, people. Um, we'll look at that in just a second. Fabrizio Romano said, fair to say Arsenal's strategy has been smart. They wanted Vlahovic in Jan. It collapsed. Had the chance to sign five or six strikers offered. But Edwin Arteta only wanted Jesus, people. 45 million seems pennies right now. It seems £4.50, really. Such a deal that we've been given. Obviously, the pay situation is still the same. He's agreed a termination of his deal. He looks like he could be going to Juventus people. Some Arsenal fans like in here have been saying maybe that's something we could consider people. Obviously, Casemiro's doing his farewell. Cody Gakpo and, and uh, Cody Gakpo and Anthony could be going to United. Have to see what happens there. Fabrizio Romano on Telemans said, I expect Telemans is one to watch until the end of the market. Leicester know that proposals could come and Arsenal have been interested since late May. So make of that what you will. Anything else Arsenal related, Fabrizio? What's the date today? The 22nd. I'm going to scroll all the way down until it changes to the 19th, people. And see if there's anything Arsenal related here. Come on, Fabrizio. You're normally on job with all of these sort of things there, man. Come on, Fabrizio. I don't care about Casemiro. Wolves has signed a new deal as well. Yeah, man, I mean, that's someone I wouldn't mind looking at. I can't lie. If Leeds get this guy, Bernardo, that's a, that's a deal still. I can't even cap, man. I can't even cap. That is a very good deal if they're able to do that. But, yeah, Fabrizio Romano letting us down right now. At this moment, once again, Arsenal have made Pedro Neto their top target. Talks are underway. We'll have to see how that one develops specifically. Arsenal have been linked with the Shakhtar ace Midruk, who's been named the Ukrainian name after Brentford failed in the transfer race. I don't buy it. I think we've obviously looked at him. We've scouted him. Hopefully Zinchenko could give us a, a positive heads up and let us know if he really is that. From what I can see in the highlights, his playing style looks decent. Plays with his head up. Good ball carrier. Good size on him you know very good technically wants to shoot wants to assist could be a development sort of player at 20 million euros i'm not against it but i would say ruben um i said ruben never pedro neto and 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 uh telemans get them done if there's money left over why not if we've done our scouting why not arsenal are now weighing up the possibility of making an offer for the talented 21 year old he could be available from seven to, for anything from 17 to 20 million quid people He's made 26 appearances for Shaq to score in twice. So he's still inexperienced, people. You know. He was keen to join Brentford, but he respected Shakhtar's decision, really. And you can see there, they tried to bid for him, people. To end up in the Premier League at 20 years of age is fantastic, but the final decision is down to the club president. This was this 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 was this was out, this was at the time, people. Had the offer come in a year or 18 months ago, I wouldn't have given it a second thought. I'd have Premier League age 20 is amazing, but since Sana and Iverbi, Shakhtar coaches took charge, everything has changed. I have support. I can't really have a long contract and all my thoughts are tied to Shakhtar I will, and he's contracting until 2027. I'll use all my power to help the side win in all comps that we are taking part in. Diallo's been linked with a move to Nice. Maybe that affects Pepe's loan. Maybe it doesn't. People just bear that in mind. Obviously, this is the same guy we've been linked with people. He's played in the youth gen. 
He comes from a good academy. Right? Well, he played for Arsenal, Kiev as well. But yeah, he looks very good, man, from what you can see. Not got the, not, you know, Ukrainian Messi, Ukrainian Neymar, these things are not going to help. He is capped five times by his country. Bring him, but I'm not expecting fireworks. He's played in the Champions League. I'm sure he's played against Madrid as well. So there is these sort of things. You're going to have to pay top dollar if you want him. Clearly, he wants to play Prem. Brem I mean, if Brentford are looking, then there's got to be something there in it, really. So we'll have to see, man. Bring him. If you've done your due diligence, why not? So, yeah, man, all of these things are saying the, the same sort of things. Apparently, his preferred position is a left winger, which could be decent. Why not, man? Him and Zinchenko could get a partnership going down that side. Left, right, left footer as well. Bring that. Why not? As you already know, Arsenal's Pepe is in talks with Nice as well. Make of that what you will. Arsenal approach United for James Gardner as Arsenal plan Yuri Telemann's move. Scrolling purely down to the Telemann's bit. Leicester are bracing themselves for a late move from Arsenal for Telemans and Rogers, want, Rogers wants to have targets lined up in case they lose Telemans people, which is obviously something something to, to be wary of. Sorry, let me just make sure we stay on task with this. Um, yeah, we'll get there in a second. I just want to... Get something else up for you. So we'll have to see, man. The Telemans thing, I'm getting bored, in it? I'm sure Chelsea fans are getting also equally as bored with their pursuit of Fifana. If they sign, they sign. Obviously, Connor Harrison, don't know if he knows what he's talking about or whatever, but, you know, he seems to be quite the in the know or gaining quite the following. So just by looking at what he's had to say, still no change for those asking regarding Yuri. Player wants to move. Arsenal in knowing us. They will 100% move for him this window. They are trying to drive the price down. On the 17th of August, he said, according to the agent of Yuri Telemans, Arsenal will make a move for the player still this window. Player has told Leicester he will not sign on and he wants the goal. Arsenal in no rush, want to pay 20 million. They will go for him this window, as I've said all along. And I think he said something about Pedro Neto as well, people. On the 16th of July, he said Arsenal have inquired with agent George Mendes about the availability of Wolverhampton Wanderers Pedro Neto. Almost a month later, what are you seeing? He's also said there's still... Oh, sorry, I'm reading this, the one above. Arsenal love Pedro Neto. However, it isn't going to be cheap. Player would love the move. Don't expect Arsenal to go to get him, sorry, for anything less than £45 million. Wolves would accept payment instructions. Won't be a fast deal but everyone is moving in the right direction. I mean, if they're on this, letting us do the Bright House payments, get it on. And I'm so happy because there was a time Arsenal fans wanted to spend 70 million on Isaac. They were trying to rationalise signing Ryan Fraser. Alhamdulillah, man. Thank you very much, Mohammed and Jesus and all these guys that are allowed, you know, doing bits for us at the Emirates. We've come a long way, you know, come a long way, even though we haven't at the same time. But yeah, that's that. If we look at this, what is this thing saying? Balogun is having a great loan spell. He's got three and three. Could have had four and three. VAR shagged him. It's all calm. As you know, Arsenal are working to try and tie down Saka and Martinelli to new deals. We did see Saliba as well. Bellerin's been linked with going to Barcelona now. Um, and obviously, Pepe's on his way out. Apparently, Reece Nel um, not Reece Nelson, Ainsley is as well. This article is just all West Ham. But if you look at the end of it, people, Arsenal's Ainsley Maitland-Niles has also been discussed as another option for David Moyes and West Ham, who are struggling at this moment in time, people, unfortunately. Second bid coming for Telemans. Yuri Telemans stays in Arsenal's transfer list, ready to make his second bid next week for the Leicester midfielder. As announced yesterday, Arteta valued the profile and next week will be decisive. More options for Arsenal board. Sandro Tonali, Moses, Calcedo. I mean, them ones there, dream chasing. A move for Calcedo can't be ruled out. Moses, Calcedo, I'm all for it. We've got Mohamed, we've got Jesus. Just bring Tammy and, and all of these things. Just sign a John for the sake of it as well. Why not? You know, why not? Might as well sign a Matthew and that. Just everyone with a biblical or religious sort of name, really. Why not? If they go for it, I still expect a bid for Telemans to go back in. And I, and on the back of that, if they don't have any success with it, I wouldn't rule, I wouldn't rule out it. I wouldn't rule him out, Calcedo, so it's not two of the same. Omri's a fan of Pedro Neto. It's not easy to have everything on your shoulders. What I like is he's not scared to beat people on the outside. I like it. He can cross with his right, finish with his left. 
He's always looking to have a goal and attack defenders, always on the front foot. It's not easy to do this at such a young age. Um, in a team where you're not often in possession and dominating games, he's performing well. We've spoken about the Ukrainian Messi. Uh, by now, Pedro Neto is a long-term target. Telemans, it is what it is. Gakpo seems to be left to United. Nice are in talks with Pepe. You know, Paqueta has turned down Newcastle. Arteta has said we will make new signings if we can. Very diplomatic, but can't agree, disagree with that. United opened the door for Telemann Swoop. That's a factor as well. So, yeah, I think we're scrolling all the way down there. What else is being said where the, the transfer news, the transfer market's concerned? Man, the dream is free. The hustle is so completely different, as you Arsenal fans know. Hit the like button, people. Don't forget, completely off topic, it's Man United versus Liverpool next as well. Uh, so, let's see what's being said here. Yeah, this is just talk, think pieces, isn't it? Salah Adin's moving closer to joining Hull if he hasn't already been confirmed as a Hull player. Wolves will consider selling Neto if they receive a suitable offer. Obviously, you saw Jeremy Pino score against Atletico Madrid. Um, I don't think we'll get Jeremy Pino and Pedro Neto, but he said, yeah, I mean, Pino and the sort of Arsenal interest is growing. I think that is fair to say. It's definitely one to watch between now and when the window shuts. And for one of the reasons for that is because there's a need at Villarreal's end to sell. Pardon me, allegedly now we're in pole position to sign Lucas Paqueta. We know we're fans of him. I don't know when about any of that really, but fair enough. Fair enough. If it gets done, it gets done, innit? Odegaard reveals he turns to Xhaka for leadership advice. And I know some Arsenal fans are going to see that and think, well, we have talked a little bit. He's a friend of mine, good friend of mine, and we're quite close. He's someone I talk to a lot and try to learn from. I think he's a great player and also a great leader. Of course, I talk to him and try to get the best out of me and everyone else. I have to try to use being captain in a good way. Of course, obviously, there's a little bit more responsibility being the captain and all that. But I try to do things the same. I try to do the same things. I always try to do the best for the team. I fight for the team. I give 100% always. I have to try to use it in a good way. I think I'm not maybe the loudest guy, but I still think, but I still think it is very little of last season that you see in the Amazon documentary. I also don't feel any need to talk when the camera is there. Maybe I'm a little bit more shy when the camera is there. So, yeah, big him up, man. Big him up. And like he said, we have to stay calm, keep working hard and look for the next one already and try to win that. I think a lot of things have tra have changed. I think we have improved so much. And it's a little bit strange to think it's only one year ago. I feel like it's a long time ago. We've improved so much. We have worked so hard in training to improve the way we play and improve all the basics in our game. And I think you can see that on the pitch now. We understand each other a lot better. I think the system works really well. Everyone understands their job on the pitch. I think that's the main thing. And the system is working really well. And of course, we have signed some good players as well. So that helps people. It's been a good start, I think, especially compared to last season. It looks a bit better this time. We are happy at the moment. Three wins and three good games. We are scoring lots of goals. So, of course, we're happy. Big him up, people. We just have to keep calm and keep working. Arsenal continue to try work to try work. Continue to try work on incoming market, especially to reinforce the attacking department. The Gunners' number one target is Modric. Is Modric? Modja? Modric? I can't say his name. From Shakhtar the next, the Ukrainian winger in the past was a target for uh, Juventus. So there's got to be something, people. Chelsea are currently exploring a deal for Morata since the deal for Aubameyang yeah, looks hard to complete at this moment in time. Bloody hell, going full circle, are they? Crazy. Absolute crazy. Keep an eye on Yuri Telemans this week. Too mad. Pepe's in talks with Nice. His agents had it confirmed. Bellerin will have his contract terminated, so the club aren't in a rush. They're waiting to see if they receive an offer. There could be movements around Telemans, people. It's crazy, man. So we'll have to see how these things there develop. Shout out, Sash. According to his information, apparently Arsenal's short list of winger targets is Cody Gakpo, this Madrid brother, Jeremy Pino. So no no talk of, of Pedro Neto, who is centred around all the talk today. And Jeremy Pino is on the winger short list. The move for a winger will be sudden and quick, as there's a feeling that a deal is already in the works. Wolves are demanding a fee of 50 million. Arsenal hope to sign the winger, who's also been offered to Man United. We've already held initial talks, as, you, as we're kind of seeing the same things. Crazy. What's this? 
and obviously he said his favorite team was arsenal as well so not that that means much but yeah and he's got five years left on his deal so it's going to take peace Pedro Neto links to Arsenal make plenty of sense given his agency represent Fabio Vieira and he's one of a very few relatively attainable wingers on the market can't lie Gibbs White did go for an English premium you know 45 odd million quid so there is that and again we're gonna have to be easy Tossart was previously linked with us and he's not got long left on his contract so that that could be an angle and an avenue for Arsenal to explore people once again people are saying expect something around Telemann so hopefully we can get things done Fabrizio Romano said Telemans is one to watch until the end of the market less than know that offers could come and Arsenal have interest since May but have not made an official offer situation is open because there are no agreements to extend his contract and there's talk around Brendan Rodgers departing Fifana wants to cut Madison if you know what's good for you don't sign a new deal it could get it could get long in that regards really and truly so we're going to have to see how that one develops, really. Uh, so, yeah, man. Obviously, you've seen that. Let's see what Talking Highbury is saying. Once again, just know that an individual has been offered to us. But the main thing I'd say, Wolves are happy if you pay what they ask and they structure the payment. So it's not like when we tried to get Zaha over Pepe in the sense of Palace wanted upfront fees. We can maybe do a thing. So... It seems like there's a willingness, but we'll just never know until whatever in it, people. Yuri Telemann stay in Ars stays in Arsenal's tra target list, ready to make a second bid next week for the midfielder. We just saw that we haven't made a bid. As announced yesterday, Arteta, Arteta has valued the profile and next week will be decisive. So we'll have to see, man. Once again, we saw this yesterday, but Bellerin is moving closer to reaching an agreement with Barcelona, which could do. But, I mean, if he's allowed to terminate his deal, then he gets his move to that he always wanted. Allegedly, Lucas Moura invites Edu and Gabriel to Tottenham Stadium for birthday party. I mean, rivalries aside, these men are from Brazil, blood. So, of course, they're going to be, man. They're just rivals because they have to be. So, yeah, man. It's a Brazil thing. So, why not? Arsenal fans will be delighted with the team's good start to the season. So, are probably unconcerned about the financial implications of their player recruitment. But it's worth maybe looking at whether there will be any issues with FFP. As it stands, Arsenal has spent a hefty 270M gross on transfers in the last two seasons, only surpassed by Chelsea, but ahead of Man United, City, Tottenham and Liverpool, which, again, money's been spent. Edu and Arteta, as much as I like what you're doing, it's a results-driven business. We need to accomplish some results. 272 likes. Can we get to 300 people? We're so close. We're so far. Man United will probably spend more on new players before the window closes. Even more incredibly, Arsenal's net transfer spend of 218 is the highest of the big six in the last two seasons, just ahead of Chelsea's. That is a fairly remarkable statistic for the club that has not competed in the lucrative Champions League since 2017. I'd agree. In, in fact, after many frugal years, Arsenal... We know we've spent money. It's just how what we've done with the money has been an issue. They spent 626 gross transfer spend, which is almost double the preceding five-year period and fourth highest in the Premier League ahead of Liverpool. Like other clubs, Arsenal spending is restricted by Premier League profit and sustainability rules, which uh, profitability better yet, which allows a five million loss per year, boosted by 30 million equity injection, given allowable losses of 35 million a year. That makes 105 million over a three-year monitoring period. On the face of it, things don't look good for Arsenal as their pre-tax loss in the last three years was 230 million, including a shocking 127 million in 2020-21. This huge loss was obviously adversely affected by COVID, but this still is the third highest loss in the Premier League this period. So we're gonna have to revert, you know, whether that's Arteta do and and Arteta asking for the prong case to inject more money, whether that's you know doing things better, we're gonna have to see. Probably just need to do what we're doing on the on the sporting front. Obviously, we did benefit from rules being relaxed for COVID. This is important as it allowed Arsenal to include 70 million profit from 1718 on the basis. Arsenal's pre-tax loss over the adjust three-year period monitoring period is up to uh, you know is up. In addition, Arsenal can make 93 million adjustment for healthy expenditure depreciation depreciation of a 48 million youth development 30 women's football 9 million community six 
given a P and S profit of 41. So we there's room for us. I'm not a finance man, but that basically said there's room for us to manipulate things really and truly. Arsenal can also adjust for adverse COVID uh, uh, impact per the account. Maybe just hire them Juventus Dons or Barcelona and just start doing dodgy stuff. Therefore, Arsenal's 53 million pre-tax loss over three-year monitoring period was improved by 93 million allowable deductions and 60 million COVID impact. That's all well and good, but that obviously was in the past. So we now need to consider the impact of our ex of our expenditure since 2020 21 accounts closed on the 31st of last year. Crazy. We have a huge amount of loan activity, as it said here, and we spent 113 million so far this summer. And obviously 147 million. Obviously, a lot of the time we don't factor in wages when it comes to the true cost of players. The impact on Arsenal's profit and loss account will be driven by two factors, wages of new purchases, which I've estimated at, big up Swiss Ramble, by the way, of 47 million for the last two years. Boy. And the annual cost of writing off transfer fees, which is 58 million, this adds up to 105 million. Against that, Arsenal have sold players for 47 million in the last two years, which is quite poor. And obviously we've benefited from reducing the wage bill. So what's the final point then for all of this information? What is the final point that just asks me to be a bit more in in jet and while our broadcasting revenues up? What is the what's the re resolution for this Swiss ramble man? Wages have increased by 45 million, 27% since 2015, obviously, because of new signings and inflation and things like that. There's many factors. I'm just trying to scroll to see, you know, with all of this, what does this great financial account reckon the overriding point is? Arsenal had to show some fancy footwork off the pitch to remain competitive during the extended Champions League ab absence, especially after being hit after being hit by covid but they would appear to have just about managed to do so while still complying with ffp rules so yeah i'll take that mate i'll take that fair enough fair play fella fair play 288 likes people were flirting we're flirting can we get there can we get there can we get there so with that i think we can call that the transfer news clipped really and truly folks so yeah man that evidently affects what we can do in this market and why it's, it's costly to shine shit players. Sorry, people, I was gone for time. What are you lot saying, man? 10 more till 300. Get on to them, man. Brooks loan has been confirmed too. To where? And obviously, he signed a new deal a couple of years ago. But to where, bro? I mean, I can't see anything on Arsenal.com, but it'll be good for Brooks. Go out and loan. Oh, here it is. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Robbing him this time. Good loan spell. Shout out, Brook Norton Coffee, man. Build on your six months at Lincoln. Now there's expectation. I mean, just keep doing what you're doing, man. He's joined championship side Rotherham on a season long loan. That's a good look for him, man. But obviously, let's see the championship table at this moment in time. He joins a team that currently find themselves 13th, one win in their last four. Who's the gaffer? Really and truly. What sort of formation do they play as well? You know, they play three at the back in their last game. So you might find he might find himself, he might find himself playing in playing in that. And he'd be joined by a couple of Arsenal Academy players, you know, former Arsenal Academy lad Josh Vickers, the goalies there. If you lot remember Cohen Bramwell, who we signed, you know, a couple of years ago. He's over there. Who is the gaffer? Because Arsenal have picked out good loans. Who is it? And it'll be a good test for him in the championship. More games, they're coming thick and fast. There's an expectation on him now because he's one of the most highly rated players to the fans. You know, I do want to see a bit more excellence te technically. He did have an impressive loan spot, Lincoln. I do think he's, he's got to improve his positioning. He is good 1v1, but he's got to improve his awareness off the ball. I do think he needs to play with his head up a bit more. At 18 years of age, I don't think you're going to improve too much technically, but I think he's got to. But just keep building on your experience. I think a lot of conclusions are drawn on young players, if I'm completely honest with you. So good luck for him, really and truly. He signed a new deal. It's all on the up. You know, you've signed, you, you know, you're a European champion with the under-19s. You had a great spell at Lincoln. 
again to to try test yourself in a higher division league at 18 years of age now off the back of playing in league one if you can show yourself for ability you know you might have a look in, in the first team because one thing i think benefits brook it's not like if you're miguel aziz and patino where yeah you might have ability but there's talk around signing Telemans. You've just brought in Fabio Vieira. You've got Lakonga, El Nene, Granny Xhaka, Thomas Partey, Smith Rowe, Zinchenko. Uh, we're missing Odegaard. There's so many we're missing out. These guys are all going to affect if you're playing or not playing. Brook, you could say the same thing because there's Tommy Asu, there is Ben White. On paper, there's Hector Bellerin still at this football club. There is Cedric still at this football club who's contracted until 2024. You'd imagine Pablo Marie summer if you do your job at 19 you might still have to go out on loan but there might be an avenue and i do think i'd give brook until he's 20 i'm not expecting him to be the finished article but if he isn't ready to be in the first scene at 20 then i don't think he will be but i do think the stars are aligning for him he's got a good chance all he's got to do which one thing i, I really like about brook he's got a mentality you know he doesn't get too excited he doesn't think he's achieved anything even though he's doing good things so just go work hard things will take place man so yeah he's only made 17 appearances in league one a lot of talk a lot of people are saying throw him in at newcastle away we should have you know threw him in at white Hart lane and newcastle he's going to get savage a lot of people make these conclusions without watching the players i'm not saying i wouldn't want him to play but come on now a lot of conclusions are drawn on a man that's played 17 times in league one so hopefully the stars align i'm just trying to Love for keeping me up to date with what's going on in the transfer world as well, people. I'm trying to gauge this squad. I mean, they've got an average age. Rotherham have an average age of 20 of 26. So it's a fairly experienced squad. I'm trying to see the sort of players they have. Who is the gaffer as well, man? Why doesn't transfer not come up with the gaffer? I'm trying to see if there's any notable players. They've got Bola as well, who's another former Arsenal Academy player as well. Fair enough. Go and do your thing over there, Brooke, man. Go and do your thing. I do like how our loan army is getting, getting stronger. You know, a lot of the players who need to be playing football. I don't know. Ben Cottrell's unfortunate with injuries. Matt Smith, I'd be amazed if he doesn't pat in a loan spell. Really and truly. Miguel Aziz as well. You lot need to talk to your advisors or they're not doing their jobs. You lot should not be playing 23's football. You're not going to get a sniff of Arsenal's first team and a sniff of it. Even if you play Europa League, once it turns serious, rightly so, you man are getting cut. Go somewhere you're going to play 20-odd games. And obviously, you know, Brook has joined the team that's just been promoted from, from League One as well, to, to what I'm looking at. So we're going to have to see what they're on. They've, their manager is Paul Wayne, Wayne. Juan. Don't know nothing about him, really. Don't know what he's new is for. You know, does he give young players a chance or whatever? But... I mean, between Brooks and Brook Norton Coffee's advisors and Arsenal, they clearly deem that this is the best loan spell for him. So best of luck, Brook, out there on loan. And best of luck to all the young young savages, them out on loan, trying to get better and improve in, in football. And that. I mean, Cedric to Wolves would be lit, but we've probably got to keep hold of him for the squad, even though Cedric's allowed to leave. Obviously, Martinelli's moving mad. Martinelli top South American stars, having netted twice in three games already this season. Martinelli's a man on fire. So we asked him to reveal his favourite and most influential players, past and present. Bro, Janino, baller. You don't get these guys at these sort of clubs again. Janino was a baller. Alexis Sanchez was amazing. And that's one similarities you've got. Carlos Tevez at West Ham and more specifically Man United and City, amazing. Martinez, fair enough. Martinez has elite mentality. Jesus, elite. RIP Steve every time as well. Thoughts are with his friends, family and loved ones at this difficult time as well. So, yeah, man, I think with that, that mops up anything close to transfer news and, and all of those sort of things there, folks. Uh, what's the time on the clock? 38.50. Oh, there you have that new contract as well as much as you want him to bust through if you don't make it forget about it innit? make money on these guys man who will compete for the premier league this season man city arsenal chelsea and us allow it man i don't know where are arsenal in the table i don't know where arsenal are let's just keep working hard in it whether we're, you know we went from finishing third to getting relegated forget all the noise man the pink shirt man that's one i want 
Yeah, he's the coach, but like, what's he about? Had to come over from Twitch. Appreciate that. Neto seems like a carbon copy of Nello for of Neto for the right, of Nelly for the right. The more I see him, the more I like him. Fitness only question mark. I mean, it's, it's fitness is calm. Put the new Bella in. I don't know where I say that. I don't mind Lewis Albert. I'd probably pass though. Bring me Neto and Yuri, and we challenge City. Tevez or Aguero, who's the better player? Ah. I'd prefer Tevez, but I'd say Aguero, you know. Do you think Marquinhos is ready? Not really, but, you know, I'd give him until January to, to, to nail something down in the team. But we need something right now. Predictions for tonight's game, DG2-2 for me. I think United might do it. It's been a crazy week of football. Liverpool need to win, especially after City drew. I think United might do it, you know. I'd rather, you know, I don't really care who wins, really and truly. But United are more likely to be like us fighting for top four. So anytime Tottenham, Chelsea, United can drop points, I'm all for it. But it's one where you wish both teams would lose, really. Of course, net spend is high. No one wants to pay transfer fees for Arsenal players. We've been offered net 02. Get the likes up, people. I want Madison. I really like him. Would you go for Arda Goer? Yeah, I would. I think Neto, I think, would be a better buy than Pino. Pino has a higher ceiling, I think, but Neto is Premier League ready and will push Saka and give him good coverage also. But if if if, if Chelsea bring back Morata, they're on banter. Late to the stream, how's it been, DG? It's been lit as it is, man. DG, I agree. We must sign all the biblical name players to get a, a holy leg up. <laughs> hey, man, it is what it is, man. Neto will upgrade Saka's performances. Certain man wanted Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He can come for the squad. Dominic Calvert-Lewin. In fact, let me not do Dominic Calvert-Lewin dirty. I would say Ollie Watkins, Isaac, Ryan Fraser. Oh, we was in the mud. We was in the mud, the mud, the mud, the mud. And, was, you know, we're still not out of the hood yet, but hopefully we are. Who will win tonight? United or Liverpool? Sorry, people. Multitasking. Man United. Set your reminders on that. Watch along, people. Live from 7.45, 15 minutes before kickoff. Uh, draw. Don't forget, Twitch gang is where it's at. Shout out to everyone on Twitch who is at the 10, 10 a.m. stream as well, where we, we just watched the Premier League, really and truly, which was still lit. Nonetheless, four stream for me today. Work great, man. 100 million for Anthony's a madness. I would still go for Paqueta over Telemans. Neto would be a good addition. Whoever improves the squad depth is welcome, though. I like seeing all those lines from Saliba that are down the middle or out wide deep instead of just across the back line. We hope we are not left short, short end of the window. I trust Eddie knows what we need, but not bringing in at least another CDM or centre mid will be criminal. Big up DG Neto is only on 50,000 per week. He'll get, he'll get some peace, man. Dribbling at speed, Pedro Neto is a madman. If we get one or two players in before the end of the window, I have a feeling we'll do no business once again in January. Ideally, you don't want to do business in January unless an, an opportunity becomes available that you can't turn down. More time, half of the business or, 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 or a youth player, half of the business you have to do in January is reactive. You know, you might suffer injuries or there might be a loss of form and you have to react. You don't want to sign people in January. Everyone's trying to give you a premium as well. Sometimes there might be deals. It might be the last time for somebody to sign, sell a player before their, their last six months of their deals are gone. They wouldn't let Pepe go if they feel they couldn't get, they could, if they feel they can get him unless they promote Marquinhos. Neto was close, class before the injury. Neto's close control is even better than Rafinha's. I hope Pepe does well on loan so we can get some money back that we spent on him. Bags of talent wasted in our system, to be honest. Got to watch out for Mendes. He will sneak three more of his clients into the deal. I mean, he's already there with Arsenal, isn't it? He's got Fabio Vieira there. Neto, get through the door, man. It's better than certain man bringing in William and that. He did, man. You know, he's contracted until 2027. Zaha actually has worse goals and assists compared to Martinelli last year if you take him off penny duty. So I don't know why we would pay 50 million just for another Martinelli output. I want to pay 50 million for now. 
I can't lie, Jamie's doing well. I mean, Brooke can tell Arsenal all about him. They won the under-19s championships together. And the poster boy of that tournament is Carney, who's obviously got his move to Chelsea via Aston Villa. So he's a good player. Finally, it took him a while, but he's still only 19, 18, 17, 18, 19, one of them ages there. You're at the best place in Dortmund to cool off and do your thing. You're right on that. Chelsea could move for Zaha. One minute is Chelsea, then it's Spurs, then it's Roma. It is what it is. If we're doing business in Jan, it means something, something went wrong. Exactly. You think Arsenal wanted to clip Aubameyang, try and get Vlahovic, do this and that. We wanted to do that in the summer, bro. Paqueta over Telemans all day. People are overestimating how much of an upgrade Telemans is on Xhaka. It's not that big of an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the PSG game? Highlights, man. Source 7 0. 7 1. Telemans and Neto would make this probably the best transfer window I've ever seen. I genuinely think we'd give Liverpool and City a goal, but it's not going to happen. Wouldn't it be better to get a bundle of Pedro and Ruben Neves? But they don't, they're not trying to sell Ruben Neves. If you could bring him, why not? Is that scored another overhyped deflected goal last night? Crazy. No chance for the Pagans. 3 0 to the Reds. You're both Reds, though. You talking about the Scousers or the Money Lads? I don't know. Can't play it, man. Off topic, people. Three hundred and sixteen likes. Thank you very much for that, people, man. That's 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 big stuff from you lot. Twitch gang, one love for you lot. Support as well. Neto and Telemans would help us close the gap to City and Liverpool. I don't know about that. It takes more than just signings. Them man have been doing it for years, near enough, perfect for years. We can't just rock up after three games. It does move us closer, but it's not about the talent. It's about your application over a thirty-eight game period. You know, by many ways, City were poor yesterday, but they got a draw. And I keep saying the same thing, so I'm not going to keep going on, but you get the point, man. I don't know about any of that. Come on, the third kit is saucy still. Tell Mendes to bring Neves over as well while we're at it. Amen. What are your thoughts on Xhaka being slowly incorporated as captain when Odegaard was subbed? Also, Belotti would be a good sign if we looked into him. I don't really like Belotti, if I'm honest with you. That's a shame that Wijnaldum broke his leg in training. He just can't catch a break. Um, Jacques has never stopped being a captain, isn't it? Yeah, he's been stripped of the captaincy, but he's never been, you know, he's always been a big character in a, on the pitch and off the field. The club have always valued him. You know, if you're a leader, you're going to lead, isn't it? So it's never been nothing, really. There's And Arteta kind of alluded to it. He was like, there's captains I've selected. There's captains that's been chosen. Jacques I, I think, a bit of the two. I think Arteta might have had to play the game with the public perception until we got to this point with Xhaka where relations are a bit better, but he's got that. Hey, this has been here two minutes. He's wearing the captain's seat. You'd imagine Zinchenko not before too long holds that. Holding and even Cedric do the captain thing in their own way. Ramsdale as well. And you've got the, you know, Tierney when he's about. Everyone should be a leader. Harrison looks quality DG. Would he be an upgrade for us? No, no. Keep him at Wolves, bro. He's been linked with Newcastle. Forget all that. Hopefully the board see other top six teams dropping points and we'll see it as an opportunity to back Arteta even more to capitalise on others' poor starts. If you could get Zaha for 40 or less, I'd take him. Ah, 35 max, absolute max. Ideally trying to pay 20 million quid. 20, 29 years of age, 30 this year. Year left on his deal, 20 million quid. Same as Telemans. If nothing more, I'm not really on it. I'm not really on it. Too many project players. Really hope Edu will bring someone with experience for that right wing spot. If we did get Neto and Telemans, I'd actually expect us to be up there. Arteta has been the job has been in the job for the longest after Klopp and Pep, and also spent the most money. Big season needed. I hear that, but if you genuinely, I want to be wrong. I want you lot to be right, but if you lot genuinely, I know it's a lot of banner to some Arsenal fans, but any Arsenal fan who genuinely believes we're going for the title, fair enough, in it. It's a bit mad. It's a bit mad. Zaha Pepe swap. I hear that. We need another winger. I hear that. I hear that. You're not wrong still. You're not wrong. Is there anything else in relation to Arsenal? Let us see. I mean, it's just all Pedro Neto, Pedro Neto, Pedro Neto. After David Ornstein went crazy with that. If anything, you see Telemans here and there. Not too sure about anyone else, really. Don't look like there's anyone else of any credibility. Mm, 
want to say I see that. I mean, if you could close the gap, but I'd say the, the the closer to closing the gap is mentality over nothing. You look, I know respectfully to Crystal Palace, you know, when 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 Liverpool clearly are dropping points against Crystal Palace, everything's going wrong. They're goal down, gone down to 10 men. They kicked it up and they looked even better with 10 men, really. And they got something out of the game. Frustrating, but something. Ian Wright said if it wasn't for Klopp and Liverpool, the Prem would, uh, would have basically been a farmer's league. It already is, you know. How many times has Liverpool beaten City to the trophy? That is, basically is a farmer's league. At the end of it, City win it, really, you know. Top content as usual, DG. In a world that seems full of agendas and reactionary out of context rants, your level-headed, uh, consistent an analyst separates you from the rest. Keep up. Keep it up. I appreciate that, Darren. Mad words, man. <laughs> making me cry my massive words of encouragement i appreciate that my dude and you lot tuned in as well what do you think about Bayern? i know they're farmers league but do you think they'll win it all i don't know man i think they'll win the league i don't know for the champs i do i'm not too sure for the Guzman in europe he looks a bit mad if i'm honest with you what other news are going on is going on i mean Apparently, if you look at this, folks, when you look at Phil Foden versus Saka versus Pedro Neto played this season, when was this graphic? I don't know. But, you know, games played, Foden's got 22, Saka's got 24, Pedro Neto's got 28. Nothing in it, really. Foden scored six, Saka and Neto have five. Foden's got five assists, Saka's got two, Neto's got five. Obviously, when you're playing for City, it's going to look better. Goal involvements, Foden is higher. Shot conversion, Foden is going to be better. Expected goal, Saka's got a higher one than him. Open chance play created. Obviously, Pedro Neto scores higher than Saka and no one's better than Foden. Touches in the up box, Foden is there. Ball carries. They're not too, dis too dissimilar, really. So that could be something. Once again, Arsenal are looking at this Madrid brother. He's got five caps for his country, valued at around 20 million squid. It's nice to have a hundred percent record, but apart from that, there isn't anything man, really in that. I don't know. I thought they would want more than 500 million if I'm on man said 500 million, 50 million, but I don't know, man. 35, if they want 35, even if they want 50, if we can run them 35 now and the rest can be some bonus stuff and and IOUs and Bright House cash converters payments, I'm all for that. Seems too good to be true. Let's just get top four this season, cement ourselves as the third best team next year, then maybe a title challenge season after that. Can't just win the Prem out of nowhere. It's not always a Leicester thing, man. It's not always a Leicester thing. I hear it, though, man. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. I think I've, I've offered my thoughts on that. And, I mean, we haven't played anyone in the top six. That starts in September. We haven't had to cope with any injuries yet. We've started well, but in relation to conclusions being drawn and all these things... We need to chill out as a football club, man. Just chill out. Just keep working. As the players are saying, we've achieved nothing. We've won three games. Yeah. What's Thursday say? As you can see, I, well, you can't see, but I'm in negotiations to try to get some content creators with you content creating collabs for you guys people if you're a united fan completely off topic but casemiro's basically a united player he's on his way to manchester now there were rumors that um he could be unveiled today apparently Pe pepe was at london coley today i don't know if he's taking part in training but We we'll have to see what's going on there, people. But yeah, man, let's see how we are again after the next three. And again, the same people that are capping and doing all of this, I just hope they're the same people that if we lose our next three or draw two games and a win, they don't just flip everything they've been saying. There he has, man. Let's see if any other team can step up to the plate this season. Without Liverpool, there would be no no title race. The league would be over by, by Christmas for the past four or five years. It would have been boring. Unpopular opinion, 
I don't give a flying monkeys. I quite frankly don't give a fuck because it's nothing to do with Arsenal. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, if I if I run a race, if I'm you know, Liverpool are there to win. You know, if man are in a race, a hundred meter race, and I've I and I've played, I've had ten races against Usain Bolt. Obviously, it's Usain Bolt, and I've come second every time. I'm not going to be happy about coming second or like, oh, we've made him more competitive. That's dead. You know, competing hype, really and truly. It is true. Liverpool have done their best to run it, but ultimately Liverpool have won it. You know, I mean, City have won the battle. How many of, for all the hype, and not even to criticise Liverpool, but, and as I've said it before, the, the unlucky thing about Klopp is that he just bought Pep in it, really. Liverpool have done great things, but it's irrelevant, really. Liverpool City keep winning it, you know. Yeah, it went down to the last game of the season, but did anyone think City are, are, are going to be on the problems? It's between City and Liverpool, in my opinion. Would I be shocked if Liverpool win it? No. Would I be shocked if Liverpool win it? Def definitely not. You know, man, I, I, title race hype. Half the time, it's, it's City leading it anyways. Like, past Premier League winners. Liverpool can have their praise for, you know, you like have high standards. You've won every trophy recently, you know. I don't know if it, if you can if you want to praise yourselves for 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 chasing it. It's still boring. Like anything that doesn't concern Arsenal winning is boring to me. I don't give a monkey's about anybody else. You're crazy. Running running the battle hype. That's a hype, bro. That's a hype. You know, out of the last six years, City have won it. Out of the last five years, sorry, wait, one, two, three, four, five. City have won four trophies, four, won it four times. Last six years, there's only been two different champions. In Liverpool and Chelsea. In fact, since 14-15, you've had Chelsea winning it twice, Leicester once, and Liverpool once. So for all of that, you know, it's a, it's fantastic. Klopp ended the, the 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 title race. I mean, the title drought with you lot, and he's done great things. But that's a hype, bro. Like, that's a hype, really and truly. And I know it was a false position, but even if I go on the last three seasons, excluding this one, you know. United have come United have come second even so it's a hype you know even even the one I just said 16 17 Chelsea won it you know and I think raw Spurs were second okay now when did Spurs finish second that's a madness 17 18 Man City won it United were second Spurs were Spurs were third 18 19 City won it Liverpool were second Chelsea were third then Liverpool won it City and United followed then City won it and then United were third and, and Liverpool yeah sorry City won it then Liverpool were third and Man United was second. Then last year, obviously, City won Liverpool and then Chelsea. It's all right, bro. Like, City are still winning the war. Like, comp competing hype. He's been dealt a, a terrible hand clock with injuries. Terrible hand with injuries, man. Yo, that pink kit looks good on you, bro. I appreciate you, Billy, man. What are your thoughts on Ramsdale overtake, overtaking Pickford? I hope so, but early form, I don't think he's going to do that right now. But that's competing hype, lad. That, competing for the sake of competing, because I, I hear it, but it's a hype, fam. It's a hype. Right? There's no medals for competing, bro. And Liverpool have high standards, bro. Man, I'm happy to finish second. Now, nah, big up Marcel. I'm just speaking in general, like, it's nothing to do with Marcel. Just... I don't care about the title challenge. Arsenal not concerned. <laughs> not in it. Like. Saying that, we sit first. Two points off. It ain't easy. I mean, City is best City winning the league because I don't know no City fans. I know Liverpool fans. City winning, it's got nothing to do with me. Competing hype. That's a Spurs thing. Exactly. Competing hype. Claiming you've arrived and not done nothing. Football ends tomorrow. What? City won the battles, bro. Like... A man going to look back and say, oh, fucking hell, we ran it close, though. City won the league last year, but, you know, we beat Wolves and they were going to lose. They were 2-0 down against Villa, though. That's dead, man. That, that's dead. If Neto and Telemans come in, it would mean one relatively important player would not make the bench, i.e. holding Cedric, Eddie. It's encouraging squad depth would look better. It's crazy, man. I don't think Southgate's getting picked. I mean, Klopp's been dealt with, like he said, there's probably a witch at Anfield because centre mids have shagged him. I do think if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd want a couple of midfielders, but I'm not, so it's, it's irrelevant to me in it really and truly, if I'm honest with you. Uh, where was I? What, what was I doing? So, yeah, with that being said, though, people, I can't lie to you. There's nothing more to talk about. And there's no point me waffling and rambling with you lot. 
make sure you're here at 7.45. We're watching Man United Liverpool at 2.30, people. Obviously, man said 2.30 at 4.30. I don't even know my timings now. We're playing FM for a piece. So, yeah, man, we're half the way done now. Two streams done, two streams to come today, people. Make sure you're following on Twitch. Make sure you're following on YouTube. Make sure you're hitting the like button. You're subscribing. You're offering your opinions. Most importantly, stay blessed. Have a productive Monday. Arsenal's top of the league, you know, 100% win record. It's, it's lit, you know. So on that note, I'm going to love and leave you lot. You lot stay blessed, stay safe.